Hello and welcome back to another episode of Into the 99, where we've got 99 cards, because Commander's number one. I am Daniel, one of your hosts, and I am joined with some great guests today. We've got Brando from the Rogue's Passage Podcast. We've got Emery, Hello. Rogue's Passage Podcast adjacent. <laughs> uh, another, another one of the rogues. Uh, rogue light. Yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, not a full rogue, I'm roguelike. Yeah, roguelike, exactly. I like rogue it. Rogue in addition to her other types. Yeah, um, exactly. So for everyone, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release this episode basically immediately. So... Um, for everyone who listened to today's episode, it was called Black Monday. Black Monday was talking about last week's stuff. It's Monday again, and it's Blacker Monday. So we've yeah, got <laughs> we have uh, we have quite the announcement stuff from Wizards. Before before I do, what, what am I saying? I'm being impolite. Brando, how are you? Um, I'm good. Um, I won't spoil what went on today, but we also just recorded a podcast doing similar similar stuff. So check that out later, but watch yeah, this yeah, one first. Watch yeah. this entirety, all but, of this. But, but where can they find that podcast? Uh, on the Rogue's Passage on YouTube or on Spotify or on Apple Music. Yeah, or, everywhere, wherever, wherever. everywhere. And go check out their gameplay videos. They do amazing gameplay videos. They actually Thanks. put ed- yeah, effort into editing theirs. It's not live footage. It looks phenomenal. I, I try. Lo- I love it. I try. And I try. Emery, how are you? I'm doing good. Just got off work. Excited to... Uh, start talking about other things that make me sad unfortunately but uh this is like therapy you know getting to sit down and talk about all the stuff that's happened in the last two weeks that's fair <laughs> and sherman last but not least how are you i'm annoyed at this announcement <laughs> i'm annoyed <laughs> i called it i called it yeah i knew this would happen let's uh let's let's talk a little bit about what this announcement is so it's uh on the future of commander this was the September 30th announcement, bright and early this morning. Ha! Huh, we get into it. It says, The past week has been tumultuous for Commander fans, members of the Commander's Rule Committee, and the Magic community as a whole. Along the way, we've seen players and fans share a diverse range of passionate opinions, far too many of which were harmful or malicious. Below and over the next few days, we'll be discussing quite a bit about Commander, starting with the most pressing. Over the past week, the conversation has escalated, uh, culminating with an unacceptable personal threats to the safety and members uh yeah, safety of members of the rules committee this is something we'll not tolerate no matter how you feel about something in magic it is never appropriate to threaten somebody couldn't agree more everyone at wizards is united on this front we will not hesitate to k- take actions who uh, against individuals who threaten to harm community members or employees that's obvious no one should be threatening people in magic mm-hmm. uh this week has also demonstrated a true uh the truly monumental task that faced the commander of the rules committee the commander rc is made up of five talented caring individuals all with other jobs and lives, which they must balance with managing the most popular format in Magic. It results in incredible amounts of work, time spent deliberating, and exposure to the public. Nobody deserves to feel unsafe for supporting the game they love. Unfortunately, the task of managing Commander has far outgrown the scope and safety of being attached to any five people. So today, in partnership with members of the existing Rules Committee, we are announcing the Rules Committee is giving management of the Commander format to the game design team of Wizards of the Coast. Commander has always been community-focused format, and this move in management does not change that. While ownership of the format may be changing, members of the Rules Committee and others in the community will continue to be involved, and the vision of a social format will not change. We've had some preliminary conversations already about what we would like to accomplish, and have some ideas we will be rolling out together in the months to come. Working with the community to, uh, to craft this format is critical to all of us. We've opened a new Discord channel on the official Magic Discord, and we'll have a weekly MTG stream talking about this tomorrow, October 1st at 10 a.m. PT on Twitch Magic. So I assume that's going to be flooded. Uh, mm-hmm. What's next? While this is very early, we do want to share one of the things we've just started working on with the Rules Committee. A more objective approach to deck power level and additional guidance and shared language for players to find games they've, that match the type they're trying to play. It isn't anywhere near finished yet, but as part of building this community, we're opening it up for feedback, thoughts, and your version of how it'll look. Think of it like an open beta. Here's the idea. There are four bra- power brackets, and every commander deck can be placed into. Well, pardon me, sorry, I'm dying. Uh, pardon, uh, I die. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> there are four power brackets, and every commander deck can be placed into one of those brackets by examining the cards and combinations in your deck and comparing them to lists we'll need the community to create. You can imagine a bracket as one of the baseline of an average pre-con deck, or below, and the bracket four is high power. For the lower tiers, we may lean on a mixture of cards and a description of how the deck functions. And higher tiers are likely to uh, defined by more explicit list of cards. This is the most re- reading I've ever done. So many painkillers. For example, you could imagine bracket one has cards that easily go in any deck, like Swords to Plowshare, Grave Titan, and Cultivate. How, really quickly before that, how often are you guys seen Grave Titan in games? Not for <laughs> close to a decade. I haven't seen Grave I, Titan in ages. I play against 
several Grave Titans all the time because I have uh, my roommate specifically who plays zombie decks all the time. That's fair. And he's got like, three zombie tribal decks. All right. So I personally play against it a lot. But And then the same, like they said, uh, yeah, like Swords to Plowshare, Grave Titan, Cultivate, and then Vampiric Tutor, Armageddon, and Grim Monolith. Uh, again, how often is Armageddon and Grim Monolith coming up in your games? I don't. I don't I think play Grim Monolith a lot. I don't I, play Armageddon because it's a poo poo, right? Yeah, I literally it. have my Armageddon old white border Armageddon sitting in my collection binder because it doesn't see the light of day. <laughs> Otherwise, my friends start to hate me. Yeah. yeah. So it says these are cards that make the game more consistent, lopsided, or faster than the average deck. I always say that the CNC EDH is for consistent. The more consistent your deck is, the more you can actually do with it, right? But mm -hmm. I digress with this wordy, wordy thing. We're nearly done. In this system, your deck would be defined by its higher bracket card or cards. I've got to say right now, that sucks. Uh, this makes it clear what cards go where and what kind of cards you can expect be people, uh, people to be playing. For example, if Ancient Tomb is a bracket four card, your deck would generally be considered a four. But if it's part of a tomb theme deck, the conversation may be my deck's a four with Ancient Tomb, but a two without it. Is that okay with everyone? Will this system guarantee perfectly matched games? No, and that might be fine at your table, but if it gets the conversation started from a shared understanding, that's already great for the table. We would love to hear what you think about this and which power black brackets you would place certain cards in. We will be evaluating the current ban list alongside the Commander Rules Committee and the community. We will not ban additional par cards as part of this while discussion... Uh, we will not ban additional cards as part of this evaluation. Uh, while discussion of the land list started this immediate changes are not a priority for now the safety and well-being of the commander's rules committee is a top priority what happened in the past week is entirely unacceptable by working together as a team we can shoulder the responsibility of this format and everything that comes along with it stay tuned for more join our discord blah 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 all right all right we're back okay um let's uh let's open let's open to initial thoughts I, I'd, I'd love to hear whoever wants to take it take it please I mean, we could literally go paragraph by paragraph and just start talking about it because there were points where you were talking about stuff and I was like, oh, I got I got opinions on that. As I, as I was reading it, I was like, I want to talk about this. I was like, I'm, I'm talking so much. Everyone's probably got opinions. Let's uh, let's start right at the very beginning. So yeah. uh, the, the beginning is the threatening the rules committee. I like I said, I don't think anyone that listens here threatens people and i don't know anyone who would be threatening people and stuff. Right. It's kind of like the No offense to many players, but like. Matt, it's a crowd of people who are out of breath running upstairs. How how serious are the threats, right? But threats are never okay. No one should do that. The doxing was like wildly inappropriate. The you can be mad about something, but but threatening people is just crazy. This is a game. At the end of the day, it's a game. We're having fun. Yep. We're friends. I, like I, I I don't think I've seen a single person say like you know what those threats were good. So I'm glad it's like yeah. a nice a nice like united thing. But like um as as far as like the rest of it like. The reaction was over the top. I'm sure you guys in your own communities have like seen your stuff. Like, what was it like for you guys seeing? It's for me. I mean, like when I heard today that like they were getting death threats, I I wasn't surprised. I mean, there's lots of people in this community that are incredibly opinionated to the point where you know they get really aggressive about stuff. Um, for me, like in my play groups, people were just saying like we're gonna quit playing magic. And to me, I take that very seriously because I like playing with all of those people. So I immediately I was like, OK, well, how do we figure out a way to make you happy with playing the game again? And that came into the discussion of are we or going to just ignore the ban? Like, is that what's going to make you happy? And across the table, people were saying like, yeah, actually, I want to ignore the ban because it felt like they just stole thousands of dollars from me. Mm -hmm. And it's like... That's fair, but you also made the choice to spend thousands of dollars on cardboard. And once again, just like, cardboard. Yeah, once again, we discussed this in an episode before. We think most of the outrage isn't the fact that people are told they can't play this game. They're told they're told this, and that they lost money. And that's where all the outrage is coming from. And once again, we're just like, guys, grow up. Yep. I I don't <clears throat> think it's even mostly from the money thing. Like I. I just don't like bands in general, right? Like it's, I, I just, I don't think the, I, I'm big on talking about the game you want to play. I'm big on like having those conversations, like having pretty matched ones, but it, but it's got to be before and after. Like, how did everyone feel? Like, oh, I kind of got blown out that game. Like maybe, we, maybe I, I thought my deck was a little stronger. Could we try something different, right? Like have, have those conversations and stuff, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Brando, what was your play group like? 
Um, for the most part, well, Ems is part of the same play group. Most of the right. most of it has come from a resounding people haven't really cared that much, or a pseudo agreement of like, yeah, this sucks. But the points that have been made out there in the internet ether of like, is the general format of casual commander gonna be better because of it? And there seems to be a sentiment that it's like, oh yeah, like games are probably gonna feel more fun, quotation marks, because things are more leveled. Um, there was no real negativity outside of just the general scope of people being bummed, but like the biggest factor, at least for me specifically, is similar to like Dan, is like these bans don't need to happen when they're not like Nadu was a ban that needed to happen. Yeah, that was crazy. Because it was breaking the game and it was causing a situation where it's no longer about four people playing a game, it's one person taking an hour long turn, and maybe they win, maybe they don't. Um, it was the same thing like Paradox Engine. It's like these old cards that were broken, broken. They were doing bad things mm -hmm. and just shutting off people's ability to actually just enjoy the game. Mana Crypt, Dockside, Jeweled Lotus weren't that. And I think that's where most of a lot of the animosity on like the oh, their band is coming from. We're mm -hmm. just like, I, I on our channel put out a short when I woke up in the morning. I literally woke up to like a flood of messages in our group chats of like the bands that happened. I took a look at it. I recorded the thing, posted it right to YouTube where I'm just like, what? None of these cards were broken. Like what make, like what sense does any of this make? Um, I think a lot think of it comes okay. down to like, people playing in different games and then just having a game where they sit and do nothing while one or two of the other players just go the fuck off. And I totally understand being in that situation. That's why I've gone and made a lot of my decks better and more consistent is because I want to sit down and do something, you know? But that's always going to happen, even if you're playing like pre-cons there's always going to be that one person it's it's the luck of the draw quite literally you never know what you're going to be drawing next your hand could suck you could go down to four cards in hand for mulligans and you could just have a bad time for that whole game that's just luck baby that's lady luck that's well, kind of the way she goes you know thing... i've died from, like mana crypt like a billion times because that's lady luck and lady luck hates me i, I was gonna say the other thing too is that like it's a social format and Sadly, in games, you can just get out politics sometimes. Sometimes you might not be the problem, but someone is more convincing. Someone has a vendetta against the card you have. Like, you're up against three people's removal, or if you're playing against me, two people's removal, because I put none in decks. But, like, it's the, like, you know, sometimes it's the luck of the draw that, like, people are more convincing and have a a better, like, hey, get rid of get rid of Daniel's cards here, and it's okay, and then they end up winning for it, right? Like, the unbalanced games are always going to happen. There's no way, like, Short of us, like, stacking all of our cards, like, in one deck of, like, actual cards, one deck of lands, and each turn you, like, draw a land and that, and you never miss land drops, and, like, we play perfect magic. Yep. Like, short of that, someone's always going to be behind, right? There's always, I play, like, 33 lands in every deck. That's, like, essentially the standard, and it's great. It's great for the number of spells, if you want to put it in, but let me tell you, sometimes you miss land drops. It happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm the same. It's I don't think I've ever, aside from my landfall deck, I don't think I've ever put more than 33 lands in the deck. Yeah, that's to my oh. my my lizard brain is like you know what? That's a two to one ratio. That's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, I need to go 34 or 36 depending on the deck. But I also like to have I like big curves. I like yeah. I like big curves. You know, uh, so I usually yeah I'll go higher unless I know for sure that I've got like tons of rocks or tons of ramp and ways to get more land that's fair but sometimes it doesn't matter sometimes cool. you're going and you're taking 10 draws and you're not getting a single land it just sucks you miss you miss so right like it's it. yeah that's the game yeah but yeah. With, with that let's, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this article here well yeah so let's, <laughs> let's go to the next like the next part of it um it says it's uh demonstrated the truly monumental task that faced the commander's rule committee Made up of five talented individuals, everyone they cared. Um, I don't think the Commander's Rule Committee really did much. The I said that before and everything like that. I uh, Maybe, again, there was just a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff I wasn't seeing, but that's the problem. I wasn't seeing it. No one was yeah. seeing it because they weren't doing anything about it, right? Like, again, we're just people, and we're making time to come and sit and talk about this. Like, why can't they? You, you can't yeah. just have, like, a format that self-appoints itself and then doesn't engage with people like writing I'm, I'm sorry but like writing like a two or three paragraph on like nah everything's all good once every four months is not 
it's not really the hard work into like a like, like commander commander's like a lifestyle for people right for so many people it's like what they do it's their fun it's how they meet friends how i met you guys how i met everyone in this conversation right like yeah. it's, it's just the yeah right like that that's it, it, commander's important for people it, it's a big thing and it, it, it's kind of absent parenting you know they're kind of went out for milk a little too long i think i i would kind of counter that a little bit because i agree with you but i think it was like <clears throat> the rules committee was the cool uncle that you wanted around but the parents were like you you'll see him in the holidays don't worry he's he's doing fine because like i mentioned before the cards that used to get banned up until this recent one were always problematic almost every single one of them was just like this needed to go because it was ruining an aspect of the game not these goals. ones are a little weird and i'm curious i'm not gonna like sub like put anything out there or suppose I'm, I'm curious of whether or not this has something to do with like sheldon being gone from the rules com committee now because his whole mission statement behind even wanting the rules committee and everything that he did was like he was trying to protect the sanctity of the game so that broken things didn't happen so that it was a space for fun mm -hmm. a space for community um where it doesn't it didn't this whole shebang that's happened has not felt like that it's felt almost like a forced push into like we don't want to do this anymore so we're gonna do something that just breaks the mold well a, a big thing is the 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 commander's rules committee like regardless of how you feel about them they did have like a disproportionate amount of say on it right like the mm -hmm. r regardless of how well they may or may not have thought that choice out it, it did wipe out like millions of dollars like that would be if you worked at a company and did that you yeah. would get fired it, it was a pr disaster their statement that they put out immediately after was a pr nightmare them doubling down the inconsistent logic of like mana crypt has got to go it's unhealthy for the format however like we're gonna leave soul ring like it was it, it was just yeah. in, inconsistent top to bottom and i wasn't a big fan yeah. of that and everything but like the this is for people who love commander yeah. and like i wouldn't in any like if if wizards was just like hey i'd like to give you like 80 grand a year each it's it's a new job for you guys 80 grand a year each you guys are the rules committee i would be like i i don't know enough people and play to do it i would have my own version of a rules committee and no one would play instance and sorceries it would all be gasoline <laughs> right like it's the, the, I, I shouldn't be the rules committee and neither should five people right like the five people it, it was too much for it and stuff especially as it was separated from it like not being a job i i complained that they weren't doing anything but mm -hmm. it's a volunteer position right like how much how much time can they should they be doing 30 hours a week of like rigorous like hey guys what's going on all for free like they're just saints no yeah, yeah. but i also think that five people is not a terrible amount of people like if all of those five people were people that were actively playing commander and like going out and doing commander tournaments and like actively talking with the community and like seeing and listening and stuff mm -hmm. that's that's honestly like depending on who the people were i would trust those people right but it's also their format i was having the conversation with a friend of mine and i brought up the whole conversation of like i've made plenty of formats that i've created from scratch by myself mm -hmm. and if someone were to come to me and be like "Ooh, i really like this idea and then want to change the cards in that format it's no longer my format but the format that i have i have all of the say over it because i am the one who created it so if they want to go and change those cards and say like oh you can and cannot do this it's their it's their right it really is but i also have the right to play other formats or create my own or do something different or change it so i can play it and enjoy it with the people that i play with cuz mm -hmm. ultimately i'm not going to be playing with rc i'm going to be playing with you guys and other friends and other play groups people here in the city you know that are going to have different opinions and want to play different cards too um, I also think it would be a real shame if too many people got involved in it, because if you have everybody on the internet chiming in saying, oh, I sat down and I can't afford a mana crypt, and I just keep playing against this person that can afford a mana crypt or is making proxies, and they're against proxies or something like that, and they just get the feel bads because they can't afford that card. Not to put a little tinfoil hat on my head, but uh, yeah. I think a lot of it had to do with like inaccessibility, because... Dockside, Jeweled Lotus, and Mana Crypt were all over fifty dollars, and not not a lot of people can have access to those cards, unfortunately. What one, se one sec? I, I know I know Sherman wants to say something. I I just had to say one thing. I don't think that the affordability thing, like I just had to chime in before I forget. 
I don't think the affordability thing is a thing because even if uh, let's say that they reprinted Jeweled Lotus tomorrow as a common, right? It's never going to be an appropriate thing to be like, I'm playing a lightly upgraded pre-con turn one Jeweled Lotus. So anyways, I turn one Jeweled Lotus Soul Ring Pass. It is, it's never going to be appropriate, right? Like no one's going to be like, okay, I get like the the scarcity of it. It becomes appropriate. Huh? You know, if they started printing that in every pre-con and everyone was playing with it, it's just, again, it goes back to the luck of the draw of if you get it, turn one or not. But yeah, but I don't th- but I don't think people would. I think that I think yeah. that it was pretty universally understood that this was a powerful card. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I think a lot of the thing to do with it is like the price on it too, because like if everyone had one, I don't think it'd be a big big issue. I still think, regardless of price, it's it would still be an issue. Now, like yeah. the reason why that okay, let's let's step it back for a second. Okay. Now, why is the rules committee? Saying that they see this problem when the four of us here don't really see this problem. Okay, let's take a step back for a second. People on the rules committee are well known. Okay, so if they go to an event, they're going to play against people that are like, hey, I want to show off my deck. And most of the time when that happens, you're throwing out pretty pieces of artwork on the, you know, on the mat and saying like, hey, check this out. And they tend to be higher priced. You guys have gone to events. We've gone to events. We see this constantly. Okay. So part of it, their idea of this stuff creeping in on casual formats could be skewed because of that. And also because Withers has been pushing for a lot of these chase rares. Okay. So the more you're throwing in, the more accessible it is. Just because someone can't afford paying two hundred fifty dollars for a mana crypt doesn't mean that they're not gonna luck out one day and be like, "Hey, I just pulled a pulled it out of a pack." Well, yeah, you I'm you want to chase off. you want to chase expensive cards, otherwise, why buy packs, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I want to have those once. people. You're gonna have those people that will get that luck and be like, "Hey, I just got it because I just cracked it out of a pack." It happens. You probably know people that have gone through that. We see pictures of people that go through that on Facebook and Instagram saying like, hey, car, car, uh, booster pack in a car. I just cracked this. Here you go. I right? pull, I pull so we bad. See this, we see this constantly. So when you have all this combined, I can kind of see why the Rose Committee believe that this is trickling down into casuals. Okay. But at the same time, we don't know their scope. They're not sharing. The, the, the problem is they're not transparent. They're not sharing the data. Now, right. yeah. at, same, at the same time, okay, if, like, if the rules committee is not sharing that data and we said, hey, can you share it? Maybe, maybe, even though we know for a fact they won't share the data, there is a possibility they would, okay? But... Now that it's gone to Wizards, they'll never share that data. They'll never, ever do that, no matter how big the outcry is. And that's one of the problems I have. Well, the I, I was going to say really quickly, Wizards does share the data, though. They say, yeah. like, things that they'll be like, Nadu was, like, overrepresented in this format. We are banning it because of that. The same with Bridge from Below, Hogak, like, a lot of the – they they do ban things, like, unfortunately. And a lot of people don't like that they ban things, but, like, they – they at least have the like the the balls to say like, hey, we messed up with Nadu. They were they were pretty quick to fix that. Nadu wasn't around. Long. Okay, fair. Yeah, I'll say I'm wrong on that then. Yeah, because part of it too, like to taking into account, it's just like there's certain metrics that we might not be shown. Um, but like rules committee, um, and Josh Lee Kwai and some of their stuff that they've talked about in in uh, the goings on here. As part, I guess he's not part of it now, but as part of the commander advisory group, uh, was sharing like how some of these decisions are being made, and it's like it's coming from places like various websites, TCG Player, MTG Goldfish, uh, EDH Rec, where it's just like you see all of these logged decks of like how many of one card is being played and how many decks. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's some information out there, but a lot of it too, because the RC kind of in one of their posts the other day, I think it was Jim LePage mentioned some of the justification for these specific bands and was purely about like them being all of them are fast mana and it was all about that idea of it's not necessarily just about the luck of the draw which is a very solid point because even if it's not these cards specifically i'm playing a green deck cool my three visits into my cultivate into my Mm -hmm. like there's always that opportunity there um 
specifically jeweled lotus was one of like the big topics and then i'm sure i, mean, I think mana crypt was kind of just on the fence and because they did jeweled lotus they just tacked mana crypt on with it where it was well the a jeweled lotus is a turn one four drop commander assuming that it's a two color or a one color commander and it was just causing situations uh, to the point where like a lot of community outcry was oh once a person has their four drop commander on turn potentially turn one the pace at which trying to catch up is no longer that pace of like it's not a casual game at that point this is now a deck that has stepped into competitive territory mm-hmm. but and if you're on the jam and you run removal yeah. and you do something like i do all the time jeweled lotus i have questing beasts yeah. he's four drop he's mono green um i get that out and i'm like i you know kept a not great hand because i was like well i can get questing beast out really early path to exile questing beast and yep. then i'm done from the game i'm like yep. okay well now i have to get all of these mana i have to be able to build back up and cast him for six. Oh yeah um, so there's 100%. always there's always a drawback from that well we saw so the whole like, turn one kind of argument is and same with mana crypt too playing mm-hmm. mana crypt on turn one is a death wish oh yeah you're, you're gonna lose the game to it because it's a 50 50 chance that you're gonna take three damage every turn yeah well, like the other thing too, I was gonna say is like even if you stapled on the, like if you stapled on the coin flip part to Sol Ring, the what it's that everyone still play it. That it's mm-hmm. like it's a good enough thing and stuff. But I, I'm someone who plays only gasoline in a lot of decks. It's all straight fire off the hop as fast as I can go. Uh, we were playing. I, I played with Emery and Brando. I believe it was a week ago, and I was playing Voja, and I was having a lovely time. I'm talking Findhorn into like Avacyn's Pilgrim into like a Priest of Titania turn two. We got a turn three Voja out, turn four Wolf, Wolf, Elf. I swing one time with it. I get blown off the board and can't cast my commander for three more turns. Just glaring, glaring at Emery the whole time trying to get revenge <laughs> because that's oh, yeah. that's what happens, right? I know we were upset by it, but I know it was the right decision. <laughs> it, it was deciding between two evils, you at, know? At the time, it was the right decision, but it hurt. <laughs> but yeah, yeah like that, no. that's what I mean, right? Like you generally speaking you build a reputation for yourself every game you play right and there's like uh i i I have a reputation of dirtling the game i i never like to end the game everyone i play with loves to just like if they've got the kill shot they take it and i'm just like how many tokens can i make on the board let's see right (laughs) i love to give people that chance to to do a comeback the last uh the last game i played with brando brando had to kill himself yeah, it literally turned into just like, okay, I'm not going through. How, how do I get Dan literally this? said, like, I'm like, I'm worried because it's like, okay, like I lost, but I'm waiting for the crackback. Dan's just like, no, I don't want to attack. No, you can you can keep doing your thing. And I'm like, okay, no, no, no. What? I was playing dragons and I'm like, okay, I have two copies of, I have, oh yeah, playing Mira. I have two copies of, of Niv Mizzet. Okay. Yeah, every I'm just time you dealing drew. that damage to myself. Uh, it hurt. But yeah, like that, that's what I mean, right? Like I, I generally do that and I have a reputation for that. And everyone knows that like the, I, I play all that. Everyone knows I'm not running answers. I'm not, if I have a blue deck, there's no counter spells in it. Generally speaking, it's like maybe, maybe one or two. That's it. You, it's a, you're pretty good odds to beat me. So like, like I understand like because I play every game like a jeweled lotus where it's all accelerated, and I play every game against everyone at the table every time. It's it happens, right? So you put a target on your head every time you do it. Yeah, but but that's what I was gonna say is that like I I don't think it was uh, going too much. But back to like what the rules committee is like. I just. I, I do think that for a volunteer thing, it, it's too, it was too much for five people. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Like five people who are trying to have, like, if this was their job, yes. If it was their job and stuff. But like I said, the the amount they were doing, the amount they were actually talking about what they were doing, uh, like all that data and stuff, it's, it's if, if there was the data, they should have showed it. Uh, doubling down their message they posted where they're just like, oh, this is the message we want to send, or uh, this is the message we want to send to the format. That's not good. You shouldn't be sending a message to the format. The format self-corrects a lot, right? Like it's a, realistically, even Nadu, even if people had Nadu commander decks, your play group's going to tell you to not play it. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. I have a, I have a Narset deck, the like where you just like try and like attack and get your extra turns. No one likes to play it. And every time I try to play it, everyone's just like, don't, don't do that. And, and so <laughs> I was just like, okay, okay well, I won't because it's not fun. It's inherently unfun. There's lots of commanders like that. There's lots of gameplays like that talk with your group that that should what should have been the be all end all is talk with your group right at the end of the day you're trying to have fun like the i only know one player who aggressively does not care about if it's fun and that's dean and dean is wonderful to play with because 
most people when they're like playing like a stacks thing they're just like oh like i know it sucks oh i shouldn't no not dean dean's just like hey that's crazy anyways it's your turn like he dean <laughs> is unrepentant about stacking the table and it's some of the I most love that attitude it's oh it's, i i love you know like rule zero is great and like making sure that everybody's having fun is awesome too i always say like run more removal run more interaction then you can deal with it and then make them regret what they're doing. And I learned that because I started playing with a very spicy group who they had decks that were far beyond anything that I could possibly build at the time. So I slowly was leveling up to be able to handle those decks. And I run minimum 15 cards that are interaction or removal in every single deck. That's minimum. right. I'd have an there allergic reaction if my deck had that. <laughs> There you know, we go. I'm, I'm your antithesis because like yeah. we play very very differently but when i sit down and play with you i'm always looking at you being like i need to make sure that i have responses for him because he's gonna go off removal is the great equalizer it. right like especially yeah. i uh i play tabernacle in a few decks you guys have you guys have seen one of the tabernacle decks heck yeah if, if people can destroy my land i've had that land beast within repeatedly oh yeah it's that's the right that's the right call right like there's just uh removal is is a good equalizer to to that and if you are seeing like uh if your early game commanders are there there's so much two mana removal in the format that just oh, yeah. like blows your some of the new commanders yes i agree or push like that have the ward built in and stuff right but yes. but I, I think a lot of it could uh could have come with that the um i i i personally think like the the part i wanted to get to was wizards taking over the format mm -hmm. and stuff um I see a lot of doom and gloom on it. A lot of people saying that. So like they said today, the partnership with the existing rules committee, we are announcing the rules committee is giving management. So the rules committee is becoming the CAG. And I believe that would make the CAG, the CAG's CAG. Like it's, uh, you know what I mean? And now like, yeah. now they can kind of see the same. It, it's obviously not going to be the same rules committee. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I'll be the first person to like go out and say it like the, the game commander's a billion dollar a year in like enterprise right like it's it's oh, yeah. it's wizards bread and butter we're all animals and we can't help ourselves if they make like a a, a cute version of one of my favorite commanders like they make like a, a cute looking Miram like full art cart everyone's gonna be like all right let's go i guess mm -hmm. you we're know? all in you know oh, yeah right like it's it just the uh, like people like what they like commander self-expressive so it's a good thing but um the rules committee good or not you either think they did nothing like i do so it doesn't change or you think they did a lot and with the wizards and the backing uh, like with wizards monetary backing they can do a lot more no matter who they yeah. choose to do it they can do a lot more they can do a lot of that um i always make fun of brawl brawl is like the bastard child of commander <laughs> and even what they've done with brawl like some people are like we'll name something good that wizards has done number one they bought spell table and they yeah. upgraded it to the server so that everyone can play like spell table was like it, it, it was a blessing during like COVID to have something to do. It's still a yes. great way. Like I play spell table with people all around the world. It's a great time. Oh, so, yeah. so wizards like did upgrade that and brawl brawl's not unplayable anymore. It's actually pretty fun on arena. Right. So I, I have to give them props for it. It's not the, the terrible thing that it once was, but even looking at what they did to a, a arena, if commander ever came to arena, Oh, you guys would, hmm. you, you guys wouldn't see me anymore. I'd be, I'd be online perpetually. Right. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's the same for me. It, it would yeah. be so fun. Frequently, but I like if they had Commander on there, I'd be doing it even more. Yeah, right. Like it's uh, it, it's a nice time. So they they definitely can throw a lot at it. But the the thing that I'm the most excited about and what I've wanted all day to talk about is we have been a guest at many many Magic festivals, and there's always a separation of Commander and Main Event because Commander is not a sanctioned format in any way. Because it's not Wizards format. It is now Wizards format. And that yep. means that there is now a very, very likely chance that there will be a Commander Pro Tour. Yep. Because there's no reason not to be. It's the most popular format. People go crazy. And the idea of Commander having actual prizes for the people who want it and the people that, like, that's very fun. To me, that's like a commander's always been relegated to the side at like a modern event or and you can't really do anything but but the chance to like have like an actual pro tour actual money thrown into the format that excites me no matter oh, yeah. no matter how much everyone wants to say wizards is the devil 
give me the pro tour let me let me go let me run oh, yeah. crazy on it. let me start dropping tabernacles left and right i would love like it just sounds really really fun and I, as, especially yeah. with their bracket format which we'll touch on i think that gives a a, a competitive chance for every play style right all right everyone then everyone else please, please. I would also just like to right hop off on what you were saying there. I also think that in a good way, because people have been saying it for a long time, especially over this last, like this recent debacle, people have like really been up in arms about it. Um, we might finally see an actual split of the format of CEDH and command, like casual commander. And that's probably going to be great for, for what the rules committee was trying to do for health of the game, health of casual, this and that. It's like maybe separate ban lists, maybe this. But being able to have that sort of situation where you have something that exists for tabletop, and you have something that exists for tournament play, mm -hmm. it, it's that is the atmosphere that I think people have been reaching for for forever. And just there's never been a space or the ability for that to actually happen. Yeah. Now there's now there is, or at least there's the potential for that. Is. Uh, again, yeah. e even if it's their bracket four, and that's what they call CDH, and that's the everything's go hard. Yeah. The the chance of actual, like. Wizards can actually now give out real prizing. They can do real things and they can make it. Like you said, it's always been two formats that are just kind of masquerading as one. And they're just like, oh, I'm the same. And it's mm -hmm. like obviously not the same. A CEDH deck is like very unwelcome into like a pre-con game. As yep. everyone knows, I'm sure everyone's had like an experience of someone like overpowering it. But like I, I think for unless you've actually played CEDH games, I think it's really seen as like a boogeyman. And everything is everything is CEDH because everything's a seven, and anything stronger than my seven must be a, a CEDH deck, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. I think the way that they're probably going to have to do that is to like if people are wanting to call their decks casual, have restrictions on cards, like yeah. how many you can run in certain things, because that's how a lot of other formats will do it. And at that point, it's going to have to go down to like what we were talking about earlier of just like making sure that you kind of have a tier list for individual cards that are often run in the format you know smothering tithe risk study um the soul ring is one that i'm like how are you going to rate soul ring it's in every pre-con what level is soul ring if mana crypt is four yeah. what is the soul ring i is think is that going to be restricted is in, that no in longer casual in in the post that they made when they were talking about their justifications for all of them they specifically spoke and i'm not trying to defend their wording on that but i think they did word it like as perfectly as they could is that soul ring defies the laws of physics in magic and these decisions it, and similar to your point about like if they just printed jeweled lotus into precons and all that stuff i don't know that soul ring is ever going to be seen as an objectively powerful card even though it is and that it's going to change the drastic sense of decks because everybody Everyone. has it Everyone. everybody's got one that's why I say, like, print print proxies. Print every proxy that you want. If you want to play with a card, print the proxy and play with it. Mm -hmm. Give a bunch to your friends. Let them play with it, too. Because then everyone's on equal playing fields. Everyone has access to all of these cards. Which... Yeah, we did, that with, we did that with all of, like, the Fetch and the Shocklands years ago. And yeah. people, have, people are still running all those. I, uh, one of my playgroups, I have a, a Rule Zero where it's any of the lands that have like multi types, like so your triomes, your mm -hmm. uh, your call time snow duels, all that. They just function as normal duels. They're not tapped. Yeah. You just play them as you play them, and it, it really smooths a lot of people's like decks out. Lets them like go into like a five color base a lot easier. I have no problem yeah. with that. I just I I just sincerely don't care. Let people have their things. Like the magic at the end of the day should be fun, and it doesn't yeah. need to like it doesn't need to be super expensive. The I, like. You can always look at it as like, okay, like let's say I want to build a Sliver Queen deck. <laughs> if I don't want to pay, if, if I don't want to pay seven hundred dollars for like a Sliver Queen or four hundred or whatever it is, right? Is, is the format better off of like, okay, well I proxied this card and then I went out to my game store and I bought all the other cards for it. I bought a Sliver deck, got all that stuff, except because I'm not buying a Sliver Queen, right? If I'm not in the market to spend that money, no one's losing that money because it doesn't exist. I'm not spending it. So is it better that I just don't make the deck and no sleeves get sold, no deck box, no other cards? Or is it better that I just like proxy the one out of control thing and I'm like, okay, now cool. Now I have my Silver Queen deck and we can all have fun. Well, mm -hmm. as much fun as I can have with Silver Queen deck. It goes <laughs> infinite so easy. Never, never going to have fun. Still generating Ooh. more stuff in, in the industry too of like yeah. the people that you're playing against. If they're playing against Silver Queen all the time, they're going to be like, well, I'm going to have to ramp up my deck. Mm -hmm. And even like 
a dollar or two at your local game store, like that's still, it's good for the economy, you know? Um, like, oh, I'm going to have to start to put in more removal so I can remove Sliver Queen. I'm going to have to go and pay like 10, 20 bucks to get some cards that are like nice and cheap. Yep. And, you know, maybe while I'm there, I see a card in the case and I buy that too, you know, like it, good for the economy. Oh, yeah. You know? And on the deck building side of that, people always fret and worry about like the cost of cards, especially when it comes to certain things, um, high value pieces that ultimately can matter but don't necessarily matter the amount of times people have like tried to pact of negation in a casual game and i'm like okay negate <laughs> my my 30 cent card just countered your 50 dollar one it's didn't see that it's, coming it's, at all yeah right yeah like these there doesn't ha- i've i still to this day don't own a pact of negation a force of ne- uh, force of negation i don't own those cards i don't play with them i still play counter spells but it's never stopped me from winning games, from being able to counter things or have removal. You don't need to spend that money on these cards to still have a good deck. Mm-hmm. But then you also have the option of like, yeah, proxy if you don't want to spend that money. Yep. One of Which, the- I mean, if, if the Mana Crypt banning was to prove anything, it's like, should people be spending over $100 on a piece of cardboard that could lose its value at any point in time? No. No, I Generally, don't no. think so. One of I don't the, think so. Uh, Even if you're doing what the professor says and buying singles, it's still way too expensive. expensive single. One of the hardest I've ever been beat by any deck was by Sherman's Galadriel deck, which I think is like fifty dollars. And I was, I was thing? rolled. $80. I was rolled wow. by that deck. How much? Eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. It was. It was an aggressive blowout. It was like a a four to one land ratio. It was not. It was not a close game. I was I dropping all my lands in one turn. Yeah, I was, I was blown away by it. It's like the, like like you've said before, right? Just building, you can change budget by just including those small things, right? Yeah. Matt, you can still mana leak a spell, no matter how, no matter how great my things are. Like unless I'm trying to Dovin's veto you, you know, like it just that there's there's so many ways around it, and you can get it. I, I don't think that price is the be all end all. I like yeah. I. Like, what do you think, Sherman, about them becoming the rules committee who wizards? I, I have mixed feelings. Like, I'm excited that they're taking over because, like you guys said, there's a huge amount of potential there because there could be like actual sanctioned events and tournaments and everything, cash prizes, you know, like a pro tour, yada yada yada, yada all that stuff. At the same time, I am a little scared for the format because once again. Wizards is a company, and their number one priority is making money. Mm -hmm. So what is going to stop them from being like, okay, we're going to print this problematic card. We know it's problematic. Um, We're just going to wait until everyone buys the product like crazy. And then after a year, we're going to say, oh, it's banned now after we've run out of stock in our warehouses. That's my worry. So it's just having the rug pulled out from under you again. And we've already lost trust in them a little bit after this. What's going to stop them from doing that again once they see everything, like the money trickling in? Like we we already have an example of that with Disney where they had the Disney Plus where they're just like, okay, we're going to raise the price. And everyone's like, oh, I'm going to cancel the subscription. And a bunch of people canceled. And they're like, we don't care because we literally made more money from the people staying with us than the people that have canceled. Yep. So On, on a just yeah. side note, it's still crazy that Disney used signing up to Disney Plus as an excuse to legally kill a guy's wife. That was pretty crazy. And that everyone, was really And everyone, everyone just kind of... stepped back on that, though. Everyone, Is this a whole person thing? Everyone, yes. did they roll it back, Sherman? Yeah, they rolled it back. Well, yeah, because that was... Uh, they, they had to. They yeah. had to. Let's face it. They had to. Did you never hear That's about all. that, Emery? No? What? That's they, uh, also a really bad way of explaining it. It's okay. Yeah. So um, at a Disney-owned property, Disney was like yeah. the the owner. The restaurant basically killed some doctor's wife. And uh, then they... Over allergic reaction. Yeah, she, she had an allergic reaction to the food that she was like assured there was nothing in it. Had an allergic reaction and died, and then Disney tried to say that they didn't have the right to sue for it because they had signed up for a Disney Plus trial. It was and it was in the TOS, yeah, what? It, 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 that it was yeah. in the terms of service, and everyone everyone was just like, yeah, like they were doing like terms of service jokes, it's like blah 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 blah. We can kill your wife, blah yeah. blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then like and that doesn't you know, surprise it, me from those big corrupt corporations right it, it, it Hasbro really, is a corporation. That that is yeah. a valid point. Yeah. yeah, but like once again, like that that one was like like everyone was just like Disney, really like what what the heck, you're right? And their Disney's like, okay, yeah, sorry, 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 we're taking it back, we're taking it back, you know. Oh. So, but like we're going we're going way off tangent here. So <laughs> <laughs> that's my bad. So, it does relate with the the Watt C yeah. thing, too, right? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Well, so, I was going to say really quickly, the yeah. corporations are going to try and like defend their like monetary interests the most, right? So yes. it, it's not crazy to think that they might like be like, you know what, we are going to print this like new chase card. Ah, you know what? It's yeah, we got to do that. But don't worry, there's a new set coming out with new more, right? Like there, there is the risk of that. But on the other side, um, this this showed why like uh, as, as bad as it is, this showed why the reserve list freak out happened when it freak when it first happened. Yeah. And uh, and people care about their value of cards, right? And wizards, I I at least think they have an interest in protecting that, right? Because the right now, commander can now be their garbage can format, even though it's popular and stuff. <laughs> Anything that doesn't work in other things, they can just kick to commander under the guise of like, you know what? Like we like the rule zero thing. We uh, we've decided this is a tier four card. Do with it what you will, right? Like they can kind of they can kind of cash in on just having it be the dumpster format. Yeah. Um. On that as well, because, uh, it when it, especially when it comes to like corporations, and I'm not going to deny that there is like a top echelon of people who are working in these corporate entities that are some level of corrupt or money grubby to the point that they really just do and say really dastardly things. But for the most part, like it's never quite that simple with things, especially when it comes to like a, like. You want to talk to like Ford or Ferrari or something, and it's like, cool, yeah, they can do scuzzy things because you can't download a car. Wizards you can't download a car. <laughs> exactly. Have you have you ever seen the meme and it's just like proxy players yeah. heading out and it's them like on a bike in a cardboard <laughs> box and the cardboard yeah. box is the Ferrari logos on it? I love that yeah. meme. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, I think one of the things like I'm not saying that it's not gonna happen. Like your prediction is very cr- is probably going to come to fruition within the next five years to some extent. But I think there's a bit of a turn away from that because we just watched and they just watched the ramifications of what they do when it wasn't done intentionally or like not really done intentionally. And people got death threats over it. And like the rule, what's going to happen when they actually do that, Somebody's going to start throwing Molotovs at wizards HQ and they're not like, yeah, at least they have security guards. Well, yeah, like realistically, they're not going to make that same mistake in the same way. Well, wizards will consider it from a financial perspective, right? Like at the end of the day, they're a business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then even past that is there's an aspect here where it's like this is a company that even if there's whatever levels of corporate greed and whatever people on top that are going to like try and like call out and be like, I'm Big Daddy Hasbro. What I say you do. There's still so many people who work in Wizards of the Coast who – care about this game mm-hmm. who are so vocal with the community who in their own discord are trying to be as transparent as possible who also probably have send, signed ndas that they're all infringing on because they're like how do we tell the community everything when and that's daddy a, corporate that's is thing. saying that i'm not allowed to say stuff and that's the thing like you 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 are going to have people like that that feel that way that work for wizard or anything but you know what for as a, a company as wizards i can be like you're not a, the face of the company. No one really knows you. You may have like 500 followers. I don't care. You're fired. True. We, mm-hmm. I see. I see that in the gaming industry constantly. Okay, which is why I I have this this view. Mm-hmm. Okay, like it happens all the time. Like if you want to take a something that is really really popular, look at Kojima with the, like the Metal Gear series. <laughs> okay, when you try to do Silent Hills, right with the uh, the PT um trailer, playable trailer. Okay, he like we had someone that was like all, pretty much like one of the big guys everyone knew. You had a huge director. You had like the guy that played like Daryl from like Walking Dead. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But yeah, you had all this stuff, and Konami's just like you're gone. Bye. We don't care. That's also okay. a Konami thing. <laughs> They're kind of the worst. <laughs> True. True. But like, you know, if someone like that, if something that can, uh, can happen to someone like that, 
who's going to care about someone that barely has any say in in something like magic yeah. let alone True. the format True. they do have full control over it yeah they really do and it's unfortunate because yeah all they care about is money because even if you have like a bunch of employees working at WASC that love the formats, love magic, are really into it, they actively play, it doesn't matter because the people above that are paying them are the ones yeah. that make the decisions. Yeah, and that's the thing. What's more important, you you speaking out for on behalf of million players or your job that pays your bills? Right? I would argue, especially from like the tweets that we are like the messages that we got from jim lepage because he was he's been very vocal in ways that almost seem like how much of this are you allowed to be saying um i i I would put my money down that the majority of people who are working and not just wizards the majority of these companies um like blizzard is another great example however much that came out after the fact but we started seeing tweets and messages and updates on reddit from a bunch of the employees after their layoffs and all this stuff like people i would put my money down are more than likely always going to try and spill the beans when it prevents people from being hurt and that's not to say that like you're i'm i'm almost guaranteeing that you are correct and that this is going to happen at some point with like i said before probably in the next 5 years i would not be surprised but it's 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 like it's a double edged sword, right? Because it's one of the yeah. it's 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 the devil you know versus the devil you don't. Yeah. Because we expect it to happen, and all you can do is prepare for it, right? Yeah. And none of us can see the future, so we don't know. <laughs> exactly. So like, I I hope that it doesn't, but I'm prepared to not spend yeah hundreds of dollars on a single card ever again. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't think any of us will because we've yeah. seen what happens, but. I heard a kind of interesting conspiracy theory oh, about no. all of the bannings and oh, the no. timing in which the bannings were done. Mm-hmm. Um, so a good friend of mine, Stephen, shout out to Stephen. We love you. He kind of brought up, he's like, yeah, I've been thinking more about the bannings and the timings of the bannings. And he had just actually bought a mystery booster two box. Mm-hmm. Oh, right after you. Yeah. Yes. Um, he bought it like weeks back and we've been planning on drafting it. We have like mystery booster one as well. Um, and some of the packs that comes with that include cards like Dockside, Mana Crypt, and Jeweled Lotus. Literally like the three of the sets that they more recently released is all part of that too. And I think that it was somewhat planned or at least like Steven kind of mentioned. And I was like, you know what? I wouldn't put it past them. That they had planned to sell the Mystery Booster 2 and sell as much of it as possible and then announce the bannings At their it. big and con. Think- well, yeah, because there's there's no way that they would have – the the, I, the rules committee likely would have actually been sued by, by Wizards had they banned like that before. Like it probably – whatever yeah. their unspoken agreements were, it probably would have – it would have been a, a, a financial no-go. Yeah. yeah. There, there is an aspect to that that i'd like to add on to and we kind of touched this on uh earlier today um because i found the same thing and then there was also situations coming up in talks where it's just like when rivals of ixalan was still being pushed and even still on the wizard's website they still have their splash page for selling rivals of ixalan as the chase card is mana crypt come fight with fast fierce mana get these cool uh yeah these cool different prints of mana crypts um and this has been a little bit of a narrative that's been going around a lot uh, about this whole like, oh, so the RC has been talking to Wizards of the Coast for like over a year now about these b- bands potentially come. But in that time, you've been pushing product and selling product off the gauge of these cards that you know are likely to get banned. Yeah. Um, A little bit of information from other sources that I've seen, but then also Josh Lee Kwai talking about this as well is that realistically all of those cards like rivals of ixlon even being in there was likely already printed getting chopped up maybe even boxed up and sitting in warehouses ready to like late ship at a later date Mm -hmm. before these talks were even being had like i'm not gonna say the mystery boosters are the one that i agree with that are like the timing's a little but they're already packs that were print like that that were already made. More than likely, it's hey, we have warehouses full of this. They're not selling anymore because it's out of rotation. Let's just slap everything we can into these boxes. 
And it, then it still fell into the same sphere of events, which is like, I don't think it was anybody sitting there in their office going, ha ha ha, let's sell them useless cards. It was, well, we're throwing it in the trash and people got pissed off about that. You know, what was mm-hmm. it, 2017? Yeah, they the found pallets, the, yeah. The pallets in, in a garbage dump. It's like, okay, so it's either that controversy or we just sell them in this box. Yeah. Repack Oops, them. Some of the cards trying to actively sell cards that were like banned and like worthless. Yeah. I think they actively elongated the amount of time that these cards were not getting banned to be able to sell mystery booster two to not lose money off of it. Well Which, that's very that's very it's been like a long time coming. I think they've been planning on banning Mana Crypt for a really long time, but they haven't been talking about it or even mentioning it or even really doing anything about it until Wizards gave them the thumbs up to do it. Yeah. And then I think, because like this, this little merger of, you know, Wizards and the RC wouldn't just happen overnight because of this. Like this takes a long time of discussion and like them essentially like being bought out of, you know, for them to like give them the rights to just be able to take control over the entire format. Like this is something that would take like weeks and weeks of like making decisions and trying to make things work um discussions happening you know Mm -hmm. getting people on the job you know so it's not something that they would just be like oh this is an emergency we're going to do this right away that's not that's not good business so i think this has been like a long time coming and now they're just like actually you know what now 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 that we've sold mystery booster 2 go ahead rip the bandaid off i don't know and then immediately after they're like oh yeah by the way we're taking control of this now my thing is i i don't even think i don't think wizards would have ever allowed it no matter no matter like it's I I love the conspiracy part of it. I'm a big fan. Mm-hmm. But I Wizards isn't gonna stop selling jeweled lotus. The yeah. the packs were terrible for Commander Masters. Were, oh, I can crack a towel and a thirty dollar collector booster. No. Yeah. That that's they're they're allowed to like print a lot of garbage stuff because they have these high value chase cards and no one's taken those away from from Wizards. They're not they're not gonna be like, you know what, we did, we had a great run, and you know what, it was cool, guys, but we'll we'll we're gonna listen. No. They're a business. I, we, I was going to say a, a while back while we were looking. Prices of Hasbro per share are only $72. And that's less than both a Mana Crypt and Jeweled Lotus. Nothing <laughs> stops the player, the player base from collectively becoming the majority shareholder in it and, and, yeah, true, and voting that way. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that for everyone who wants to look at magic like a stock market, let's play the actual stock market. Let's all just buy Hasbro out, control the the share. I'm very let's not do the Wall Street bets. No, no Wall Street bets. Wall Street bets. New new finance podcast. I'm actually all about this. I'm very poor, but I got a little bit of crypto money kicking around. Let's go. Hmm, Interesting. Let's let's get our foot in the door. I I would really, really, really like us to talk about the brackets next, though. Though, yeah, I I was gonna say that. I'm just saying though. Nothing does stop us from buying all of it. We could buy it, fire everyone we don't like at Wizards, give the keys back to like the Mark Rosewaters, the Gavins, the, you know, and just be like, all right, you're on thin ice. Please don't, <laughs> please don't wreck our stock price now. Um, yeah, so I, I did want to, there was, there was two more things I wanted to touch before we go. Number one is the brackets. We have to talk brackets. And then the last one was their, their talk about the ban list. So let's, let's talk brackets. Someone else go, because I've, I've been, I've been talking lots first. Go. I mean, is it ever going to be a reasonable thing to expect? I don't think they're ever going to be able to manage to figure out an actual system that people are going to agree with. It just doesn't make any sense. There's, yeah. there's no way you're ever going to be able to be like, get everybody to agree on something because it's going to come down to like salt too of people just being like, oh, well, your deck beat the crap out of me in this particular game. So my deck is a one and yours is a four. Yeah. You know, there's no way that people are ever going to agree upon any of it. But I do like the idea of having it where it's based off of the individual cards in the deck yeah. and having a tier system of those specific cards. So if you have a couple of those cards, it's more than likely a four or, you know, at least a three. So the I like only, where they're going with it, but there's no way that it's ever going to make sense. The only thing I really have to say on, on that in, in kind of agreement on that is it. It's it's a next to impossible task. Some cards, swords to plowshares, cool, quantifiable, easy. There's it's it's right there in front of you. It does one thing. Maybe there's other cards that synergize it. It does one thing. 
Then you have one of my favorite cards that I've been abusing lately that is super niche. Um, uh, Lotus Ring. Pay three to equip to a creature. Tap. Uh, that, that creature gets plus three, plus three in Vigilance. Tap to sack that creature, generate three mana. Outside of like an aristocrat kind of pingy deck, it's garbage. Nobody's ever going to put that in their Bruna Voltron. It never, it will never make sense. It will never yeah. make sense. In in my Henzi deck, it's phenomenal. Yeah. How do you ever quantify what tier that's supposed to be in? It, yeah. does, it different deck is going to be. That's a great card. But that's, some decks are going to be like that's garbage. But that's the thing though. The 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 purpose of the bracket. Okay, so I. I think the bracket idea is a phenomenal idea. Mm-hmm. I think it's fantastic because one, this actually allows wizards to have these sanctioned events where we're like, okay, if you want to be a EDH like pro player, here, here's tier four, go nuts. If you want to be more casual, here, here's this tier, go nuts. At the same time, the RC said. We wanted to try to make people uh, be more creative, okay? So, you see all these 50 staples that we constantly see? That's tier 3, okay? If you want to be a tier 2 and you want to be more casual, okay, go nuts. You're still going to have some staples, but not as many. And now, you can go be more creative, okay? So, now we're having it where... Okay, we have the CEDH side, which is going to be tier four, where you can go nuts. Okay, and we can have these events and everything. And who knows? Maybe you have events for all the all three. Uh, sorry, all four different tiers. Okay, where you're you're a pro player in tier four, but you know, then the pro player in tier two. I'm a t- pro in tier one. Randall, you're in tier three, and you know, etc., etc., etc. Right. So I ha- I think it's a fantastic idea. How they're going to do it? Who knows? Yeah, okay. that's the challenge. Granted, all four of us can have can I can guarantee you all four of us can take a l- look at whatever list they come up with. Okay, decide. Okay, let's build a deck that's tier one that they would consider as a pre con or whatever or pre con level. Okay, and literally build a- build something that's does not have a single card listed in what is like in like approved and whatnot and still wipe the floor off of many players because one we kind of do this on a weekly basis anyways we're building uh-huh. decks constantly we know the we know the cards really really well mm-hmm. and that, it's just because we have that knowledge okay we have to go through we're always trying to change it up when we're talking about deck techs and whatnot or 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 whatnot okay so because like let's face it if we're if if we come on and we're like here's another deck tech here's the same 55 cards okay or here's the same 80 cards here's the 20 cards we're changing up no one's gonna listen to us yeah exactly the same the same roadmap to every deck is the yeah so because of that we constantly change up what we're using what we're trying to use for removal and all that stuff so because of that our knowledge is vast okay now will other players have that kind of knowledge i highly doubt it there are going to be people that have this knowledge i've been playing forever or just love the game so much that they know every single card by heart but the majority of people that are going to be in tier one are going to be new anyways so it's more like a learning curve. And then from there, they can, can jump up to tier two, tier three, and et cetera, et cetera. So, and that's how I feel of it. I think, I think it is great. How are you going to control it? I have no idea. At the same time, I don't really care. Because <laughs> we're just so, going to have our own discussions about how powerful our decks are. But what like, I want to see. It. What the, I want to see. Why we, the only reason why we have this is because no one can be truthful about what their power level is in the first place. This hey, is the only I'm reason why you do this. All my decks are eight. I don't think it's even a problem with people not knowing. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a problem with people like not everybody thinking that their decks are innate. I just don't think people know how to judge their decks appropriately. There's um, a lot of people like that. Yeah, and then it depends because it's like here's my one hand, the perfect seven that wins me the game on turn three. 
But if they're not there, I can never win faster than turn eight. So it's however, like it's 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 however tough. that that is true. But at the same time, that's based around your play group. Yeah, your play group a seven can be a nine for Daniel and myself. Okay, a uh, four for you guys could be a you know a seven for for us. It depends on the play group. Yeah, every single time. So this is one reason why people have such a a varying idea of what a power level is okay doing something like this says okay this is what we think a power level should be okay here's the different tiers now stop arguing (laughs) on what is a seven okay no one cares anymore everything because everything's a seven because your deck okay you you have 20 cards in tier three and then are 10 cards in tier 4. You're, if you say it's a, your, your power level is a 6 or a 7, I will murder you. <laughs> Not saying that threats are appropriate. Once again, Ooh. it's because they have cyclonic yeah, rifts, okay? this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that the, uh, I think it's unlikely that they're actually going to bracket individual cards. I don't think yeah. there's actually a way to do something like that. That's, uh, that's, that's well, too- there is. Well, well, it's, it's, it, it's just too many cards to to bracket individual cards. Like the, I I can't see them. Like there's, I think twenty or thirty thousand legal cards in EDH. There's no yeah. way for them to be like, you know what, legal, not legal, bracket, not that. So You're right, it's much more viable in like modern, where there's significantly less cards being used. Yeah. What I think the most likely end result of the bracket is to group them by intention, right? Because yeah. very easy yeah. to make four brackets of intention. Number one, we have a CEDH. This is your competitive balls to the wall format. You guys do what you want, how you want, win at all costs kind of thing, right? Uh, you have one for like players, like just like a, I'm a newer player or I'm playing pre cons and stuff. That's an easy, that's an easy bracket to, to get because everyone understands basically the gist of how you should or shouldn't be playing in that, right? Like the, we all play pre con games. We all do that kind of thing all the time already. And then, you can go for your high power. We do normally have high power games already. People say, I want a bit of a, a high power. And then sometimes people just want like a casual, like kind of battle cruisery, right? Mm-hmm. And and if you break it down into those kind of formats, well, that that's a pretty easy format to bracket because like I can I can say pretty confidently that like if you just want to play like in like this bracket two of like casual stuff, you're not going to like a tabernacle hitting the table, right? Like you're you're not gonna want like cyclonic rifts in a game where everyone's just like trying to play like dirtly dor- like kind of things, right? Like sometimes people play like a jank thing. We want a fast game, right? Like a a great example. Em- Emery love chaos decks, right? What I what do. like those those aren't gonna like fit into like a, a precon league, obviously, right? Because like it's a little it's a little kind of hate, uh, you know, like they're they're rough. But is is a is a chaos deck gonna hang at like a high power table regularly, or is it just gonna kind of annoy the table with what it's doing? the thing chaos doesn't care chaos just wants to fuck it up yeah Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter their tier list does not exist for chaos chaos doesn't care it just wants to make a mess but for someone that's brand new to the game where they're literally sitting down and cracking open open their very first pre-con ever and you pull something like that they're gonna be there's a high chance they will be disgruntled and not want to play because they're not able to learn the game properly yeah the uh Right now, deck ranking is it's not it's not good. It's not good for anyone in any format. Like the no no one's honest about ranking their decks. Like I, I've said it so many times in the past before that like people just like everything's a seven. I make the joke about that all the time. No one ever is playing anything weaker. And then when you win, there's that no one actually like makes any distinction between like a C D H thing. Like everyone's like, nah, it's okay, yep. right? Like so everything everything is just like the. The most powerful is the most powerful. So, so one of the things that I've been doing over the like since we started our channel, um, the Rogue's Passage, go check it out. Um, is we tend to avoid infinite combos as much as possible because it tends to be like as soon as you lean into building an infinite combo, it's not always the case. But you you do this and then you try to win with that. And you're like, oh, it didn't work. Okay, I want to get to that faster. And so you start building these pieces that lead into like, how do I hit that like auto win button? quicker mm-hmm. 
And that I think is kind of like that really big comparative level. Cause ever since we've started doing that, and even our play group has kind of been stepping away from like playing infinite combos and just doing highly synergized stuff. Mm -hmm. So many more of the games are starting to feel a lot more like fair or like, yeah, somebody or one or two players pop off and somebody gets left behind, but that's just the luck of the draw and nobody's as butt hurt. But then you get these games where it's like, Oh, I hit my two pieces that just go infinite on whatever turn. It doesn't matter. And it's like almost like this sullen, just like, was cool. Yeah. Was next, cool. You I know, guess. I really like Dan's idea about, you know, like, Throw away the tier system, throw away the brackets, throw away all of that. I want a sliding scale of balls to wall. Mm -hmm. That is the most important thing. Like, yeah. how hard are you going? Like, how hard are you wanting to win? Are you just wanting to, like, you Spin know, play some and, stuff, and so. do some stuff? Or are you looking to win this game within the next mm -hmm. five turns? Which well, I'm sure that's yeah. what the bracket's going to end up looking like. Because yeah. if you look at it, right, like there, there's different things for everything. Like you can you can bear like pretty easily like I'm trying a precon. This is bracket one. This is a you know what I mean? This is a new precon out of the box. Everyone understands what's going into that. You're not going to bring out a crazy deck. Maybe I'll play a group hug deck so the precon can go off. You can see what it's missing a little bit, right? That That's mm -hmm. an easy thing to do. Number two, I want to hang out with my buddies it's you know what i mean i'm just i'm just here to play magic and stuff i've had a i've had a long week i want to i want to play magic with my buddies we're gonna have some drinks we're gonna we're gonna have it, it's just a social game where we're we're all fooling around no one's we're, we're out to uh, uh the intention of this one is now we're out to visit our friends we're about to have fun everyone's laughing having a good time uh the next one i want to win this one i built this deck yeah. i'm proud of this deck i really want to i want to try and everything i want to i want to try have answers and stuff like that and then cdh is like the the, there's no brakes on the train. I want to see the best that you can get with with whatever's like available and stuff, right? Because uh, again, in all those things, the, the the intention is what wrecks the game for people. It's not often the cards. It's because you thought you were having a fun game sitting around with your friends, and then suddenly, like suddenly, your friends are popping off infinite combos, and you're like, "Well, this isn't really a game we agreed on. I thought we were, I thought we were all just buddies, right?" The same oh, as yeah. if if you guys like. <clears throat> If it's the first time you get out in a while and you haven't played and you guys are like, I want to play some higher powered stuff. I want to test the build I've been going and I really want to put some into this. And I'm like, no problem. And then I just play like some low powered garbage deck that can't interact. It can't like do any of that stuff. It, it just I'm just a, an empty spot at the table because it, it, it's also fun in the opposite direction because now you miss out like you you don't get that a chance like the it, everyone has to kind of feel bad for me like I've got a broken leg proverbially yeah. speaking. You know what I mean? Like it's a, right. Like it's it, it's intention. Everyone wants to go out and play similar games, and yeah. I I think like the no, no matter how we try to if, ranking on a, a scale of one to one hundred is going to look different for everyone, and especially like I said, it's such a political game. It's going to oh, be yeah. so different. Uh, a very good example: we both have Miram decks. My Miram deck mm -hmm. totally different than your Miram deck, and if we switch those Miram decks, we would play them differently too, right? Because oh, yeah. I would sit and try and see how many dragons I could make in your mirror deck. That's all I would do. I would I would try find I would try find someone who can balance my creatures. I try it's everyone has different play styles, right? So oh, yeah. if all four of us played the exact same pre-con, we would all play it differently, right? So the mm -hmm. the way you play it is not like like the cards aren't enough to to judge something on it. Like because but again, I play dual lands in a ton of like group hug decks, right? The mm -hmm. the dual lands are seen on EDH rec as like kind of salty and stuff and they they can draw some ire of the table if you start dropping dual lands down, right? But at the same time, I'm trying to play like a group hug deck, right? The how you play matters, I think, more than what you play a lot of the time, right? Because again, it, you go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, oh. I 100% agree. Yeah. Because one of the things I've been doing lately is whenever I'm a lot of spell table is I sit down and I ask my whoever I'm playing with to pick hero or villain. And that's how I pick the deck that I'm going to build is my villain decks are generally controlly racing for the win just things that are generally seen as rude or salt inducing or my hero decks are the i'm spinning my own wheels i'm not affecting your board if i counter a spell it's because you're trying to board wipe me or something it's just like your hero or your villain right i love that i yeah. really i really like that way of, of looking at it i can't not be a villain so <laughs> it's all it's all villainous choice i don't understand villains. it I have one deck and it's friendship and people actively don't want to play with it because it, it the goal is to make the games go on for four or five hours. Mm -hmm. I would love so, it. Yeah, That's what I built my Bumbleflower to be. 
No one wants to play it, so next time we play, we'll just have an eight-hour Magic the Gathering game. Yes. Oh, no, that thing's going That thing's going forever. I built Bumbleflower to be able to recycle the graveyards, all of this nonsense. The game is going to be perpetual. I love it. We'll just play an a, like, 18-hour stream of one game. No one wins. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I do have a I do have a win con in there and it's divine okay. intervention. Take so. it take it out. Take it out. It's not a win con. Get rid of it. Everybody wins. Yeah. Listen, yeah. what Who you're going to do, what you're going to do is you're going to remove that and you're going to put in the great aurora because I just put that in the <laughs> bumble flower and when instead of winning the game you're just going to reset it. I uh one you don't of have the a problem. one of the saltiest I've been is I played a uh I was playing a, a huge landfall my uh my what's the name? Big really? cat. Wind Grace. Wind Grace. I was playing Wind Grace, and I great Aurora, and uh, my little brother, yeah, Big Cat. My little brother put some mana into his pool before it, and I, I got my land triggers out, and I had like a lot, a lot of triggers going on, a lot, a lot of triggers, and he, uh, he had enough mana with, with what was in his hand to uh, hit me with that uh, whirlwind, whirlwind denial. denial. Yes, yeah, I think you were in that game too, Sherman. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that? Yeah, and I got all my triggers countered three mana per or four mana per, or it's count. Oh, oh, I didn't like that one. That one hurt all real your bad. Field of the Dead triggers. Yeah, Field of the Dead, Valakut, like it was. Yeah, everything gone. Oh, it really hurt me. It, uh, it, it really hurt me deeply on a financial level. That one, I, I don't think I've played Wingray since. I think I've, I think, <laughs> oh. I think that retired that deck for me. That and you gotta that, bring that guy out. That and the sleep. Yes. Back on that big <laughs> <laughs> sleep. Warwood denial sleep. It's all it's all coming together. Um oh, like, like I said, the my, my last thoughts on brackets are I don't think it's a bad thing. Worst case scenario, nothing changes, and we all just keep playing the same way we play right now. And a lot of us have fun playing anyways. And best case, it is a good system and it works good. They they seem to want community input on it. I uh, it's it's exhausting trying to explain deck power to people and stuff, right? Like so many people just don't have the the wherewithal to like be like you know what your decks your decks not very good or it is very good or they just leave cedh out of it and pretend that like infinite and fast mana doesn't yeah. exist in their scale so they're like it's a nine and i'm like okay it's a nine i gotta play some crazy stuff and then i just bully the table for the whole thing and uh, like everyone's a bad like i don't know i i love i love the heroes or villain like what do you what do you want me to do on that one i think that's like a really cool yeah. way to uh, to pregame and stuff I, I think i think just pregame conversations even still it looks like oh, yeah. they still want a pregame conversation. So I, I think intention is going to be the best. What kind of well, a yeah. game do you want? Do you do you want to go silly? Do you not want to go silly? Oh, yeah. I don't know if the bracket specifically has to do with it, but there was other stuff that was put out specifically. I don't know if it's only by Wizards of the Coast. Uh, talking about trying to build resources. They're actively trying to build resources right now to better give uh, the community ways to kind of handle that. I don't know if that's just the bracket or if they have other things in store, mm -hmm. but they were very vocal of like, they're desperately trying to find ways to like give people a actual way to have the turn zero or the, the rule zero conversation in a constructive way that actually helps tables. The only problem with that is it's going to be AI that does it. It's going to be some kind of algorithm that yeah, makes an idea of what these like, we, me and Brandon are in a group chat that, um, like it was in my, my spicy group chat first, and then they got posted to your group chat talking about, a like an AI algorithm that was rating decks and giving them levels out of 10. Yeah. And we were putting in some of our decks and some of the, the choices that were being made by this algorithm didn't make sense, you know? So there's all sorts of stuff where, you know, it'd be great if, there would be some kind of a an algorithm that would actually work for that and actually understand what combos work with what um what decks need certain things um i think a lot of it would have to come down to like literally going on mox field and pulling up all these different decks and pulling up actual win rates of those yep. decks but that, even then like, you can't trust ai for anything so. there's a uh, it's mtg cards realm and stuff so i was uh yeah, that yep. that's the one and it's it's got such weird things like let me let me quickly throw in a i'll throw in the first list i see on here like the someone's notions yeah, elemental deck trader tribal deck was a six yeah i put and in I my henzy deck i wouldn't it, agree with that thing all the time yeah i put in my henzy deck and it called it a four and i'm like if henzy is a four we have some problems yeah but, but one once again it comes down to 
um, your play group. Okay, because <laughs> like what? What's that? Sorry, I've got a the this first deck. It said it went from a one. Now it's up to like a six, and then they're just like, okay, this is a six. So the first deck I could find is like already like at like a, a power level six on it, and and it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have like anything crazy in the list. Like it's got some some okay lands, thirty six lands. Like I'm just uh, you, you, if you look on the video and stuff, it's got it, it doesn't have anything in the realm of like actual fast mana, and that's considering the six counters, yeah. two counter spells. This guy builds like me, whoever this is. Yeah, but like, yeah, like all this, like it's based. It's based on like uh uh your pay- play group and everything for the most part and everything and like what things are popular and what things aren't popular, right? So like let- let's face it, okay? Like there was an article who I can't remember who it was. They said like okay, like from MIT or whatever, saying like Magic is literally the most complicated game ever, and that like yeah, you can't predict what it. it is, yeah, yeah, right. So. Even if you have AI trying to figure this stuff out, okay, it's not going to be perfect, but it is a solution for now. And that's all that we can ask for is a solution yep. for now. And at the same time, Wizards did say that they hope that the community will give them ideas and suggestions and help try to build a database or something like that to explain, hey, this is a problem. This isn't, okay? Oh, yeah. This is a combo piece. This isn't. If we see combo pieces mixed in with like other things that fulfill that combo, then it's going to be a higher power compared to not. Yeah. Not it's that a tool and, to use for sure. Yeah, but, that uh, and, you can't bank on it. I, I was going to say nothing stops them from like designing basically like a a nearly Tinder esque package for it where you can just like swipe on cards and like you think this is a bracket one bracket two bracket three bracket four card Ooh. swipe no, different just, left right up down cheat codes this is just wizard's way of finding a like getting the community to help them data mine yep. and then sell for information that's all it is <laughs> <laughs> what information how many cards we like what, yeah, what, how many decks how i have spend our, how we spend our money everyone scan your your decks this is how much this community spends. This is how much that community spends. Okay, right, this is what is they so focus dangerous. on. These are the sets they enjoy. And let's focus on these. Let's reprint these sets because we see 80% of the people enjoy these 12 sets compared to these other four sets that no one cared for. So we will never visit these planes again and we'll just visit these ones that everyone likes. So there you go. See? It's all about data mining. Yeah. I mean, if that's a reasonable expectation, I won't. I won't deny that. The thing about, like, especially, like, what was, uh, I can't remember the name, the website you were talking about before, Cards the Realm. The Cards Realm, yeah. Card Realm. yeah. Um, these websites and these services are also just going to get better as time goes on. Because right now it's still, I don't know how long they've been going, but obviously they're just gaining popularity in, in mass now. Um, the longer those go on, and then even, like Sherman said, uh, as much as they end up data, da- yeah, data mining us for however much we're going on with this like it's going to refine all of this situation maybe yeah, for the time. best maybe for the worst we don't know yet but i i'm at least hopeful i think that it's going in a good direction my uh yeah. my my skip cool. my turns deck it says is an eight yes <laughs> so, so i agree it's not a good deck it's a horrible deck but it quiet it, you but it but it walls the game down which is its own kind of not for me strategy. it just removes me from the game like these people just scoop yeah. They're just like, I'm done playing this game. Got a good win ratio, I'm sure. I, it does have a good win ratio, but it's usually because yeah. I, I can't I can't play. Well, yeah, but that's the whole thing is you're not in the game, but you can't lose the game because you're not there. Yeah, but is second place so bad? <laughs> yes. So, I have something that I'd like to bring up that I've been talking to like a couple different groups about it. And I'm sure like you guys have seen me talk about it all the time. Um, I'm wanting to create and play a new format um, that I am calling Anarchist, which has no ban list, absolutely no ban list, and it's going to run completely off of Rule Zero. The idea for the game is to start with no ban list, and within the groups that I am currently playing, to develop our ban list and what we do and do not want in the format. So that that way we can hone the format to exactly how our groups 
like to play the game. Can and that's I... where we were talking about doing it on the Rogue's Passage of just doing a no ban list commander game just for the coming fun soon. of it. Coming yeah, not for uh, a couple of months, but coming soon. It, if you so guys, I can finally play Leave Old Wheels. If you guys do um, that let, really quickly, let me know and I will I will bring Black Lotuses to the table. Sir, we Absolutely. already have your name jotted down All as right. the first person we play that game with. Yeah. It was it, like we need we need to get Dan in on this. Absolutely. It would be fun and reflective. Yeah. Um we would be able to like go back and understand why certain cards have been banned and why people don't want to play with these cards. Mm. But we would get to have the conversation within ourselves. There's a like I miss Hull Breacher. I miss Hull yeah. Breacher. A Preach lot. It. Same. Um, Same. It's a cool pirate. There's there's all sorts of cards that I look back on. Like I think uh, Dan, you talk about Primeval Titan. All oh, the time. bring it back! I called the store yeah, and put on. I called the store and put five aside today because of the next part. Beautiful. Um, Free my Brady boy. has been wanting to play Mono Black Braids, like original Mono yeah. Black Braids. And I say, yeah. absolutely, bring her back. Let's do you it. Know what the, you know what the funny thing is about that is, especially Mono Black Braids. Mono Black Braids was rude before Jeweled Lotus. With Jeweled Lotus in the format, it's like, no, it definitely needed to stay there. Now that Jeweled Lotus, Lotus is gone. Moxes, baby. Let's oh, go. Yeah, we're exactly. with, but I we're think, playing with Black but, Lotus. I think Braids makes everyone sacrifice, doesn't it? Like even Yeah. Like, yeah so yeah. even if you yeah, you you get one turn of that and then you lose your land. Yeah. Yep. Um and if that's how it happens, you scoop up and you play another game. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, I would just be like, well, I'll sit until you have no lands. I will, I'll discard every turn. You have, you get your six damage off. Go ahead, hit me for six. I'll take the six for the table. Then we'll start the game while you have no car, no lands in your hand because now you're out of lands for playing, and we're all going to kill you. See, see, that's that's the joke of it, Dan. Is it's ninety nine lands, <laughs> and, and your commander is great. I uh speaking of that the the deck I just put into that is is my basically 99 lands deck it's the uh it's my world fire deck Oh yeah dude I, I'm so excited I, yeah. I just put that in and it says it's a 1 I don't, I don't know if that's right <laughs> No no like I said it it called my Henzi a 4 and that is the most objectively wrong opinion I've heard in my entire life yeah. It's uh it, it's you have to have a counter spell on on like the turn 4 or you lose to world fire and yep. the and the whole deck is painlands. I don't I don't quite know if that's a one. I know I'm a yep. bad builder sometimes, but shush. Um the the one la the one last thing I did want to get to is the uh obviously the ban list announcement mm -hmm. that they were saying at the the very end is that they are going to discuss the ban list. That excites me. I think yeah. that that's a good thing. Um the ban list isn't a good spot and there's been so much introduced into magic, so many different things um yep. They've kind of been already toying with uh, essentially making like nearly Oathbreaker by yeah. making things uh, like the enchantment backgrounds, right? Like the I, I love I love the pick a background cards. Those are some of my favorite commanders. I, it's, I, I love so them so much. much. And, and it's not long until they're likely knowing that people like Oathbreaker that they'll do something similar with like a spell kind of thing, right? But if somebody made like my thing is I just like commander. If somebody made like an Oathbreaker commander and they had a commander that they wanted to pair with a spell. I'd pro I'll I'll pretty much let people play anything. I I just I just like to play. So I think that that's like a an interesting thing. Um, I, they really want planeswalkers to be legal, and they keep making like can be legal as your planeswalker, but they shouldn't have to print that on that. There is some planeswalkers that would be annoying to play against, but you've seen it in Tiny Leaders, you've seen it in Oathbreaker. There's they're not really mm -hmm. too problematic. Again, tables kind of police themselves. Yep. Yeah. There's uh, a a lot has happened in Magic, and they just haven't uh. They haven't really adapted their thinking on it. I like I, I still can't understand the logic of Primeval Titan being banned with how powerful other things are right now. Like it's a card, and there's so much removal in the format. Oh, oh no, someone might get some lands, but green decks are already gonna get their lands, right? I think the biggest focus for Primeval, and this was kind of like the rules committee kind of shooting themselves in the foot along the road, is they were banning the instigator, they weren't banning the actual problem. Primeval Titan is banned because, oh, I'm going to go grab Gaia's Cradle and Nykthos at the same time, and and oops. But those were the problem cards. Why not ban those cards instead? And I'm not saying that, hey, let's circumvent that and ban those cards now. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Bring back Primeval Titan. Give let's Prophet of Crufix, I want to see that. It's not yeah. even broken anymore. I have, I have a deck that has three lands that let me cast things at flash speed and have Seedborn in it. 
that's a profit of Krufix already in the deck. Mm-hmm. It, it's not broken anymore. It's not broken anymore. The every time I've seen a Legolas's quick reflex hit the table, it's been worse than it's been worse yes. than a profit of Krufix because I'm like, okay, damn, this hurts. Yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> I play that card. That's a great yeah. card. But yeah, like it's but- the I I think that they've needed to as much as everyone oh yeah it's it's like every if you've played any cdh everything is like consultation that's everything it's Mm -hmm. get like that that is kind of stale that should be removed from competitive get that fish out of here we don't want that fish uh uh, again yeah like a a turn one mystic remora like there's there's a lot of cards that are they're just kind of boring that's how all of them Mm -hmm. are built and i i know that like the competitive meta is currently shaped around those things but it's because they know like like the cdh meta has kind of been able to thrive because they're like they don't ban for competitive so they leave us alone so we can find what's in the best of it and thassa's oracle in like a normal deck isn't really a problem it's you know it's kind of a win out of nowhere card but you, you can see it coming you see it telegraphed so like it's you know it's not it's not quite the same but at the end of the day I, some some bands something should go on the ban list. There are some. No one likes opposition agent. Have you ever seen anyone cast opposition agent and be like, "Hey, that's delightful. I really I'm really enjoying this while you do it while I cultivate. I actually kept this hand only because I had to cultivate, and my game's unplayable without it. But I've actually really thought this was very clever that you've opposition agent me. Well feel, done, bravo. No, everyone gets so mad. I feel called out. I it, just did that to a player oh, the other day. It's, it, I've it, watched it happen to uh, someone searching for their second land drop. Yeah. And yeah, they were literally yeah. like, I can't play the game. And they, they walked away from the table. It's, it, See, it's that's a, a dick. bad it's a feeling. Dick. And that's, I think that's why like people don't like Hull Breachers because it removes the card draw. Yep. But yeah. one of my well, favorites that's... was it in Sharpies out instead on all of their Hull Breachers and they just continue playing yeah. with Hull Breachers. Mm-hmm. That, and like Dan has said uh, a couple times now, is its intent, because it's like, Hull Breacher by itself, not a problem. Hull Breacher followed by uh, each player draws X cards. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. That's rude. That's I, I played was- Hull Breacher in Galaseth because it was a Treasures. It's the same thing. You'd oh. probably play it in Edward Kenway because Treasures. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? Yeah. It, it's that's it's, all I it's care the intention. About. Yeah. If you're, again, if you want to lock people out of the game, that's already a different intention. And banning Hull Breacher isn't going to stop you from doing that you're still doing that you just have one less card to do it but everyone that wants to do that still plays that way it's not like mm-hmm. you're like hull breacher and they're like all right guys we'll smarten up now <laughs> yeah. all right exactly. on our best 100%. behavior now um i like i just like i said i think that there's a lot of stuff that uh smothering ties is objectively bad for the format like that that's a card that no matter who it is like it's it's either a perpetual two-man attacks on the table or you play with people like me who never play it ever and the only things i put in deck are draws there's no destroy creatures in my deck but there's draw galore so i'm sitting there i'm giving people i'm giving people eight treasure tokens a turn having a delightful time just and and stop going crazy it's not so so i i I made a reel and i kind of talked about this earlier and i'm now curious dan was it you that commented on that reel of me talking about the bands because some Mm -hmm. somebody from into the 99 talked on the reel probably maybe all right um I my my initial take was you're gonna ban Dockside but not Smothering Tithe. Mm-hmm. Like Dockside is not a problem when it's put beside a Smothering Tithe. Smothering Tithe is so much worse. It gets out of control every time. It's every at, time. at at worst at its worst that it performs. You've taken six mana off the table a turn. Yeah, like or a, a, a round. That, that's a lot. That's a lot to uh, stacks people out. At best, you're ramping yourself three mana a turn if no one's drawing. And yeah, uh, a sing oh, yeah. a single wheel is is nearly impossible to come back from. If if you drop if you drop like one one just uh what's the winds of change? That, yeah. No, wind what's the uh, what's the blue one? What's fall. the what's the blue wind wheel? Windfall. Wind That's the yeah. one. Thank you guys. Yeah, if you if you drop a single windfall after a smothering tide is out, it's like okay, you've got twenty one mana available now. There's pretty much nothing that you're not going to be able to do. Like even if you draw a mid full of Eldrazi cards, you can dump them out that way. It's Smothering Tides is a crazy card, right? So there's there should be a look at it. I I personally like the idea of not having cards banned generally. I I just think that things self regulate, right? Like people play what they're gonna want to play. I like seeing people's like weird ideas and stuff. I don't I don't know. I don't think I need to be told that I can't play Golos because some people might play like a, a good stuff pile with it. I just want to play Gates. 
I, I still yeah. have my Golos deck together because it's, in my opinion, the best deck to teach new players how to play because it teaches them the choices of going to find different colors for what's there in their hand with that ETB. Shows people alternate win cons, a very budget friendly commander. I'm never taking the Golos deck apart. I love Golos and I love Golos gates, right? It, it's all uh, intention. I think, well, and I think that was originally like where the rules committee, why like I agree with where they've been and what they've done for the most part is because it kind of was unspokenly about the intention. You ban Golos because you're trying to limit the players who are going to be abusive with it. Mm -hmm. And then the players who aren't, you get to turn zero dis or you know, rule zero discussion it and be like, it's not that, like, I'm not playing it as broken. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, though. I think there's a couple of cards on the ban list that objectively are problems. Paradox Engine is kind of one of them where it's just like, there's no way to play that in a jank way, really. I, I didn't mind Paradox Engine until Urza came out. And then yeah. when Urza came out, there's just a, there's, it's just too good. It, it does it does a lot. Like it was it was already pretty powerful, but there's there's always a removal, so you can do it. But but with the the Cheerio style decks like Miria, Urza, any of those kind of things, uh, it, it became like too oppressive. And yeah. for the same reason as Nadu, even if it wasn't oppressive, it was annoying to sit through. Like play a zero mana thing, untap. Play six mana spell, untap. Like like all yeah. your rocks are gonna untap it. it it's, un it's an unfun play style, right? Yeah. yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing. It was just like, yeah, let's say what Paradox Engine and Nadu are like the two that are like, they're done. They had they had a moment in the sun. They're done. Everything else isn't that. Uh, I don't. I don't think you'll ever convince people to bring Iona back. I don't think Iona's very bad. I just want Emberquill back. Love Iona, Iona and I, that was what I was going to bring up and just be like, it dies to removal like unfortunately like if you're playing in a four player pod and they're all playing the same one color it, okay like, <laughs> if you're playing in a four player pod and someone can't remove it that yeah. isn't playing the one color that you're you're naming it like it's well also you can just sit down and be like i have iona in this deck you're playing monocolored probably not going to play this card because mm -hmm. yeah. i'm not a jerk you know yeah. there's there's like, some things you, you you've yet it. to run into those jerks i've run into them many times before <laughs> I dated a guy for years that he used to play elf ball like in every single format he would do elf ball of some adjacent and he used to play his decks and build his decks like like an insane person like he would have every top tier card possibly imaginable and that was right when I was getting into commander and I had an Iona and I traded up to get this cool alternate art Iona so that I could play it as my commander so he couldn't play the game and that's then funny. that's satisfying it yeah. was really good there there is like a few things on here that are that are feel bad things i can understand oh, yeah. oh, wanting totally. wanting some of them and stuff like uh like rafelos i get that having like just inherent endless ramp in the command zone but marwin's not really any different marwin already no. is gonna you're gonna play it with elves Mar no marwin deck fails to generate mana ever yep right like it's just there there's a lot um I don't personally agree with the Leovold band. I don't think that that's a good band at all. Oh. Yeah, Le Leovold's a blast to play. The, they can't draw more than one card each turn. Okay, there's other formats of that. And then it's draw if you try to remove it. Okay, still, that's not bad. It's because people put a bunch of wheels in their deck, and it's essentially yeah. like Narset Windfall constantly. But again, if you and play... That's, if you that's, pl that's the goal, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, all, it's all intent. But again, out of high power, if you said, hey... I want to play a high power game and stuff. I've got a Leovold deck. I wouldn't be like, well, it's a little too spicy for me. I'd be like, okay. You just can't draw more than one card per turn. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying I'm trying to win. It doesn't matter what you're throwing in front of the try to win. Um, I also really hope that they can bring back Band as Commander because there are a lot of cards that are obnoxious in the command zone that aren't yeah. aren't fun, right? Like I'll I'll be the first person to say it. Toxrill shouldn't be allowed to be a commander. I, I have, I've I've played Toxrill a lot. And no one's ever enjoyed the game. No one's ever come up to me at the end of a talks real game and been like, you know what? That was a very <laughs> delightful time. We all had fun. This was an engaging game. No, every, great. <laughs> every time I've played talks real, no matter what I've put in the deck, I've made like a talks real like group huggish deck where it's like all about like giving people card draw and like it's mana rocks, giving people card draw and helping other people tutor. Nope. Still a talks real talks real still hits the table and I still have 30 slugs and everyone's still mad at me. There's a yep. like, like, 
talks real. Yeah, I it, know that it shouldn't be in the command yeah. zone. Yeah, in in a deck. Even a mono white black can be like totally fine, but she should not be in the command zone because having constant access to that is just obnoxious. Yeah, there, there's there's some things that just shouldn't. Like um, a, a great a great thing for that would be uh, Kinnon. Kinnon. Yeah. It shouldn't be in the command zone. Com like, Kinnon just enables too much. It's a combo piece directly from the command zone, right? And if they said, like, you can't have your your go infinite turn two commander, most people would be like, okay, I understand. But it could still be in the deck, still play it out and stuff, like, make it a little harder. A lot of these things are, like, commander's such a unique format because the card sits there. The card sits there and we have our potential win con or our, our special piece always available, right? But the same thing, like Lutri shouldn't be banned. They should just say you can't have it as a commander or uh, as a companion. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's it, I have I've run Lutri in so many decks. Lutri's my boy. Free the otter. I 100 percent agree with that. I just put another to the deck. <clears throat> I have I I pulled a full or, or like like a foiled fancy Lutri, and from pack to yeah from from pack to my uh, collection, it it's just been sitting there. And I want to use him so badly. Uh, and they just, just gave us more otters. I'll let you play it. I, I play it. I, I just I just threw it in a Lania deck. There there are some well, things like limited resources should stay banned. Limited yeah. resources for anyone who's not mean. It's a one mana enchantment. When it comes into play, each player chooses five lands, then sacks the rest. As long as there's ten or more lands in play, players can't play lands. And in a four player game, yeah. Sure. There there's a few things on here, but like Sway of the Stars, I don't know why that's banned, but like Sway of the Stars is banned, but Worldfire isn't. Well, it be Worldfire used to it. I think twenty sixteen they unbanned Worldfire. Yeah, but again, Sway of the Stars is just yeah. At a ten mana, each player shuffles their hand graveyard permanence into their library, draws seven. Each player's life total becomes seven. It's just a game reset. Like honestly, and that that one actually, I didn't know about this one specifically. That kind of surprised me too, because I have we were just talking about the Great Aurora. Mm -hmm. This is the Great Aurora, but now everybody's on a seven on, yeah, on damage steroids. clock. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not worse. Or the... It's fun to me. I like that. Yeah, that's actually Fast fun. Bond is one that I've always wanted to play with because I think Fast Bond is very interesting. In what scenario, other than when you've drawn like a ton of cards, does Fast Bond become like game breaking? And then again, yeah. if you if you drop the Fast Bond man out and you okay, you've got twenty lands to drop out. You're already probably winning at that point. If you're holding twenty, yeah, you know what I mean. If you're, you, you should get the game over with, start another game. Yeah, rather than like sitting and dirtling it and stuff like that, because yeah, even like in your best case scenario, let's say that like we're we're fast bond is like a, a turn one. I've got fast bond six lands. I take five damage. I get a commander out that's a five mana commander. I now have nothing in hand, and I top deck everything until until the end of time, and I've made an enemy of the table. Yeah, absolutely. Right, like yeah, the, I'm really looking forward to this anarchist format that I'm uh, playing. With. Another great because example of something through it from the beginning and just figure out like what cards we like and what we don't like and just play however we want to play, and then we can sit down and just be like, oh, well, what do you guys want to play? And rather than having conversations of, oh, I have this card in this deck or this card in this deck, is that okay? We can just be like, let's just sit down and play anarchist because then it doesn't matter, and then we can just play whatever we want and then when it comes up we can just be like i don't like that card would you take that card out of that deck for me you know so yeah. it's just rule I, zero on steroids i was gonna say it really quickly before you do that one card that should be banned sarah ascendant sarah ascendant's not banned can't explain why <laughs> a one mana yeah. six a one mana six six flying lifelink in command or, why not oh, right, right. No, All right. we'll take and my it Sarah. Comes down with the whole like having it in your starting hand or not right it's the same thing with gemstone caverns like gemstone mm -hmm. caverns other than in your starting hand is kind of shitty Kind well, of sucks. Uh, if you're if if you're if you're pulling straight gas, we're you know we're we're eight or nine turns in. I'm going hard and I'm I'm looking for a win con. And I draw my jeweled lotus. Well, that doesn't do anything. I can't use the mana. It's not it's not yeah. even as good as a rock. My commander's already out. Someone mm -hmm. has to kill my commander to make it more expensive. And then really like I'm I'm one mana positive. But like it's yeah, it's a fail safe. Yeah, it's 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 a good opening card, but a lot of them are not. I don't know. Anyways, what are you saying? You want to say something, bro? Oh, I, uh, I, I, I won't. A little off topic, on topic. I just kind of wanted to throw an idea out there for you guys. Rule zero discussion way ahead of time. I want, I'm going to put Sway of Stars into Bundle Bullflower right next to the Great Aurora. Mm -hmm. And then um, because I want it to be a deck that makes games last as literal forever as possible. Yeah. Following oh. in you and M's lead. I, I'm, I'm taking after your guys' 
uh, teachings here. Yeah. Uh, I want to put, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this probably. Shahrazad. Shahrazad, let's go. I do not want to play I, sub games. No <laughs> sub games. Can I, can no I, sub I, games. That's, Shahrazad is cool. I've always wanted to play it, and I've seen it get played, and I've played the additional game, and beat that game, and then gone back to the original game. <laughs> What is the difficult part is that it takes up the extra board state because you have to like put away the other cards and it's it's messy and that's the thing I don't like about Shaharazad. However, I've also played Vanguard where we have like the Vanguard cards, like yeah. the oversized cards that, you know, do different things. It's like having an emblem that you just get all the time. One of those is Squee and Squee yeah. lets you look at like all opponent's hands are revealed if you have the Squee Vanguard. And I don't have that card in the Vanguard format because I don't put it in there because it's not fun to have to like show have everything more yeah. on your your side yeah. of the battlefield Ugh. where you can't play lands and stuff, and then it just gets overcrowded. I like the idea of like having everything revealed, but I don't like it taking up the space. It's messy and it, it's not fun. So Shaharazad, I love the idea. I would let it happen one time and then it'd be like, you can't play Shaharazad anymore I, because it's too messy. It I, messes up with my OCD and it makes me anxious. I was going to say, speaking of stuff like that, no one's ever enjoyed a knowledge pool. Anyone who doesn't cast a knowledge pool hates knowledge pool. Yeah. It's it's always fun if you cast it, but it's never like, oh, that's great. Now I've got a, now I have to put my card I actually won here and I get your, I guess, counter spell. Yeah, it's, that's not. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say, if you ever want to solve the power spiking in your group, begin playing anti games. Anti games are not sanctioned. Yes. Yeah. It's not that. But but take a D6. We roll the D6 and whoever it's, let's say Emery's the chosen one to roll the D6. Emery rolls a six. We all remove six random cards from the deck face down that no one can look at. That's the anti pile. Look at how the power level is going to go down and look at how people are going to chill out on that when they, they might. And it's the same thing. You suddenly don't have your combo pieces that are in there. You suddenly don't have your infinite enablers and you risk losing your hundred dollar card. If you want to play, watch, watch those, watch those budget decks come right out. And you know what? I'm going to actually yeah. have a great time with a $50 deck now. It's uh, well, I, I you know love anti games. Once abandoned. again, we don't condone gambling. We I don't condone, condone gambling, everyone. Is gambling's just, ra gambling's random chance? This is skill, baby. Let's go. Yeah, and, 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 and he's not gambling. That's why they took it out in the first place because they considered gambling. Yeah, I'm it sorry. Is, you know, you're winning the cards from the other people based on I, the performance of the game. I would agree that it's gambling, but if that's gambling, I would have to ask what buying a pack of fifteen random cards. It's yes. also gambling. It's oh, also gambling. Oh, no, you, you said it. You said it. Time. Yeah. You said it. And no, I, I agree. Anti's kind of like weird and hokey, but I love that idea, Dan. I'm I just saying, I, I love playing anti. If Even if, if everyone wants to throw together a budget deck and just try an anti game with me, I think yeah. you guys will have so much fun doing it. It's so fun. It's so silly. I uh, Doing it one of the last times I did it, I lost six of my lands, and they weren't good lands. But playing a game with six less lands in your in your deck is a very very different ratio. That oh, yeah. that takes me down to twenty seven lands, and let me tell you, that's quite a that's quite a different game of trying to draw. I lost that game. Well, I do vintage draft, and what we do in vintage Ooh. draft because we play with a contract from below and cards like that, and I manage to get it in my deck every single time. Yes. What we do for the ante is when you cast the card and you ante a card, you exile the card. For the rest of the time you're playing at that that draft tournament, That's so you bad. then have to, after the game you have to go in and find a different card and put that in your deck to continue playing the draft. So it it's a little bit more fun because you're not because it's all proxies from the same guy's cube, right? Yeah. Um, so that way you just like go in and pull out like a. Sh shittier card to put back in the deck, and you're like losing those cards, but you're not like losing it. It's not like salty. And feel bad you know it's it's really fun to play that especially like if i lose my card like if, if brandos who wins my card at the end of it i sign all the cards that that are there and i say like this is from daniel and then by the end of the league like you have cards signed by 13 14 people that is just fun. like oh yeah you keep losing it it's uh, anti so um, fun but i was gonna say yeah, the, um, the, the biggest problem with like cultivating a ban list for this is that we have vintage legal cards like we have essentially we have vintage light with like combo pieces there 
alongside like decks that would be like a standard legal deck, right? Like I've got like if you're making like uh, something that's that's thematic to one of the new scene themes, right? Like you're making a clue deck. Well, you might you might play against like a, a full vintage power deck that's like running like uh, your monoliths, your your vamp tutors, like all those kind of things, right? Like so having it like I wouldn't say bands are, are what's important. But like, but having intention there is that because yeah, like th- that's a crazy difference in power. That's like just being like, hey, we're gonna do a quick like pick up basketball game, and it's just we've got a few NBA players here, and I am like, I'm crippled. Yep. Yeah, I'm in a wheelchair. We're gonna see how this goes, right? Like, there's that. <laughs> but yeah, no, like I um I I I'm optimistic about it. I think that uh, I I think overall it's good. I think it's very sad the situation that came about it. I I don't think anything was good. I don't think the ban announcement was good. I don't think the people harassing it was good. The the people getting angry and stuff like the. Uh, I I thought it was stupid. I thought it was a stupid ban, but like, you don't go harass people for it. You do the right thing, which is I'm just going to ignore them. I don't I don't listen to them. I partner whatever I want to partner with whatever I want. Like it's that that's the the point of our format has always been that you can play what you want, kind of how you want. Why are we threatening to kill it's people over this? Rules yeah. Zero, right? <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like it's like like I said, I I think that it's uh, I think it was a bad situation overall, but I think a lot of good could potentially come out of it with uh, with what we could get like access to, and and there's that there there is always the the underlying dragons den situation of they're a corporation that wants to breathe fire on us and take all our money and hoard it, so like there's that could be bad. I think that those are like warranted claims, but but uh, I I just think that there's some good that can come out of it and. If if anything like like commander can't die, that's I've seen so many people. This is the end of commander. It's not. <laughs> it's not that we don't need a rules committee. We don't need anything like that. Like, I'm not gonna. I'm never gonna be like you know what? Like commander's dead. Oh wake up now, baby. I've got to sell my cards. No, there's no more command. No, I'm gonna always keep playing commander with my friends. I encourage everyone to always keep playing with your friends. Make sure everyone's having a good time. That's the only thing that should matter. The only rule is are the people I'm playing with having fun. And if they're not having fun, that's a pretty easy thing to to do. Talk to them and say, like, what would make it more fun for you? Hey, I don't hey, I don't like your stacks list that you only do. Hey, maybe you don't have three different Toxroll decks and only play Toxroll tonight. It's not Slug Night. It's not Slug. You you keep inviting us over and saying come to Slugglessdale and it's horrible. Yep. <laughs> I I honestly, if you want to have a night where we just all play the worst possible decks, I'm all for it. But then we also got to follow it up with a a four way friendship game. Yeah, eighteen I, hours, eighteen hours of friendship. Yeah, I would love, I would love just a. I, I love playing. I played a four man uh, back with Brian way way back in the day. We played a four man group slug deck, and that was like one of the fastest games I've ever played. That was like horrible. There was like three mana barbs out. Like it was, it was pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah, that's I what I like idea. to see. Uh, Brando and I are going to be doing. Uh, he got Balgavoth, and so did I. But I'm playing it as uh, Lord of Pain, mm-hmm. and I think I hope we do it on stream because I think it would be a blast. When uh, we do that game, what? when we do that game, it's gonna be it's gonna be Lord of Pain versus Lord of Pain. Cool, because um, Balgavoth versus we're Lord fine. of Pain seems meh. If we're doing that, it's it's Lord of Pain versus Lord of Pain. Because if you guys so, want, I'll come play your luck on that. No, you have to play Lord of Pain. Hey, it's it's four. Be it's, it's, four, it's, four Lord Lord, of it's four it's Lords of Pain. Card, let's play Lord of Pain. The, yeah. the only de- the only game of you just got to get a Lord of Pain deck. The only game I've ever played that was like that was uh, we we Brian stepped away like during the pandemic. Brian stepped away, and me, Zach, and Benson, uh, like some former hosts and everything, we all agreed we were going to play Orvar and not tell Brian. And then Brian came <laughs> back, and it was a three man Orvar. The all form, and it was like, uh, look, we all revealed our our commanders on stream, and uh, Brian's like, I'm playing Savala, and Ben's like, oh, I'm playing Orvar, and Zach's like, what? That's crazy. I'm playing Orvar, and Brian's like, huh, that's weird. And then I was like, you guys wouldn't believe this. I'm playing Orvar. That was probably the the most unfun game I've ever seen for anyone, but it was very very funny to us. That's that sounds hilarious. But yeah, no. Does it? Does anyone have any closing thoughts on uh on this? Like, what's what's everyone's final take on the on the rules committee thing? Everyone, obviously. Let's all say it again. No one needs to threat. I think I speak for everyone. When you can't threaten people, not a good thing. Shame on people. Be nice. Be nice. Be, be friendly. Better. Be but, better. Be nice. But sans threats. Let's go in order. Let's let's do Emery first. Emery, what do you think? Final Man, closer. Talk to your friends. Talk talk to them while you're sitting down and playing a game with them. Rule zero. Talk about what you guys want out of Magic the Gathering. 
Talk about what makes you happy when you're sitting down and playing and like make it happen. Just it's so easy to just talk about it and have fun with it rather than just letting somebody else dictate how you do everything. It's the most important part. That's what it's all about, baby. True. Brando, any closing? Um, I mean, I've said a lot of it uh, here. I've said a lot on our podcast. I've said a lot on just comments and other stuff. Really, I don't care either way. I'm going to continue to play Commander. I'm just not going to stop playing Dockside. That's fair. I respect that. Uh, again, Turn, I, I was going to say it's intention, right? Like you're you're playing Dockside, not crazy. It's if you're blinking Dockside in a casual game, sure, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's. I'm indifferent, kind of. Sherman? <laughs> Ooh, so... <laughs> um, it's... I make, like, mixed feelings. Uh, it's sad. Like, I, 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 I think it's sad to see the rules committee go, in a sense. But at the same time, like, I'm excited to see what Wizards will bring. Because now, like, once again, like, we have the money backing up certain events and whatnot you know um they're definitely gonna switch up the format a little bit we know that for a fact just from the fact that they're saying we're thinking about brackets so we do know that they're gonna shake things up and you know what we're in for a bumpy ride let's just Mm -hmm. say that because we're gonna have people screaming and yelling saying wizards you screw this up once more yeah yeah i'm done blah, blah blah you know what We've seen this song and dance from all these people. And in all honesty, if Wizards makes a change and a bunch of people start yelling and they're saying they're going to quit the game, I'm not going to miss them because those are probably the people that are uttering threats anyways. And I think the game is going to be better off without them. So yeah. goodbye. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um, other than yeah. that... I think that the format will improve overall. Yeah. Not just because the rules committee is gone and Wizards has control of it or not whatnot. It's just because we have like we 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 basically have a group where they're like, okay, you know what? We have this money, we're trying to get all this feedback. It's not five people that are trying to get all this feedback. We literally have like a team of like a hundred people that are gonna try to work on this. Sure, it might take a little bit longer, but at least we have the resources to try to figure out what might work and what might work. And that potential kind of makes me excited. So it is exciting. I like that. We are <laughs> we you. are in for a very bumpy ride coming up in the next year or so. <laughs> just because we know Wizards is going to change up the format well they're they're gonna un- gonna they're, have- okay, they're gonna unban jeweled lotus that's happening that that oh, their thing to, like their it. thing today that was very clear legal terminology that they were I reversing those video, bands Dan called it let's see what it happens we'll it, come back to this oh no no that that's uh that's a very it's uh we're gonna look at it we're not doing it right now but that is there's not it's they're selling product and so is the man they're not leaving it banned or yeah. they're gonna unban it for the minute they want reprint equity, but it's gonna it's their commander set. Commander sets are always in the summer. We're getting yeah. maybe five or six months of it banned, and they're gonna be like, you know what? We've evaluated it. The brackets are here, and we believe that this is good. But don't worry, Commander Masters number three. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. There you go. Now. And Jewel Lotus is the box topper. So no, you're gonna have no. everyone cry, saying that we they already ripped it up and then they already burned it, and then they're done with the whole game. And once yeah. again, good riddance to those people. It's yeah. gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call it right now. <laughs> Commander Masters three coming out. Jewel Lotus is in it, and then Portrait Art of Z- Z- Zatalpa for some reason. Because why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why, not Z- why not Zatalpa in it? Yeah, right. I have a counter bet to that. Okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. Jeweled Lotus is going to stay banned. Commander Masters 3. It's Jeweled Lotus 2, baby. Jeweled Lotus 2, let's go. We're so back. <laughs> We're so back. This time, you have to tap it and then untap it for 3 mana. True. Yeah. They could always do like or it not. enters tap, enters tapped and with a stun counter. I don't know. They could they could balance it. They could balance it. Jeweled Lotus 3. Or it comes in, you can't use it for at least 3 turns. Who knows? Yeah. Well, they just did that to that one Jace. 
which is weird. Uh, they did it with one of the one of the angels too. You can't cast on your first, second, or third turn or something. Like oh that. yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I don't it's know. possible. I hope they ban Psychrift. That's the that's my closing <laughs> thoughts. It's the last that's the last thing I got to say. I don't hate that card. I don't. That's that's it. I like I said. I it's too much doom and gloom for it and everything. It's the there. It's everyone has had to. It's as as content creators and stuff. It's so hard to like not like none of us want to sit and talk about like yeah. the same thing everyone else is talking. Everyone wants their own thing. Like come here for. It. But yeah. there's there's no way to miss talking on this. This is this was the biggest news in Commander, followed yeah. by the biggest news in Commander. Oh yeah, I'm just saying. There's nothing else they can do on next Monday, unless they unban back. If they unban Black Lotus next Monday, all right, I'll give We're them that. about it again. Yeah. yeah, next Monday they abolish the reserve list and stuff. People lose their mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's it. That those are my closing thoughts and stuff. I I hope everyone. I hope it's been a lengthy talk. It was very nice to sit and chat with everyone about it and stuff. And I'm I'm hoping that we can. Uh, get some other ideas and stuff maybe i'm wrong maybe lots of people think differently maybe everyone hates it and wizards is the devil and you know what i mean but like i i think that there's some i i think like you said it's, it's both i think there's reasons to be optimistic and i love the idea of a commander pro tour i seriously hope that we get something like that because i would love to play commander like on like a like a grander scale and especially with like how much can be like broadcast and actually done it'd be really really cool to this all of us like so many different content creators like you know what I mean? It'd be very fun to like see some of them like play at like the highest actual levels of like a tournament play. Get out, get like interacting, like seeing like like I personally a, a great example of this. I would love to see people have to out politics Sherman. Sherman's excellent at politics <laughs> at table. Sherman gets people like killed all the time while Sherman's a problem because just because he's got like the the great mind for like hey this is that like and and sherman is a killer with like with just these like budget decks and stuff it, oh, yeah. it, it's like it's it's something i admire in the play style so i would just love to see like like things like that be open to that because in a one-on-one -on -one format you don't get any of that there's no politics and you're just trying to win you're just trying to it, it's a raw luck of the draw but with four people who can be influenced who can make little side deals of like we got to take daniel out because he's a problem and stuff that's a sliver deck we can't leave it alone I think it just makes such a, a riveting format, especially when it's like a rotating different tables. I, just, I love the idea of it. Pro Tour Commander is what I want so badly. Make the you know actual what they're gonna do? Next Monday, what they're going to do is they're going to ban Sherman. <laughs> ban Sherman? Politics? <laughs> yeah, politics Dude. aren't allowed in the game anymore. No more yeah, deals. You can't, you can't have conversations yeah. while you're playing the game. All right, I'm done with yeah. the game. I'm going to go back to streaming chess. Yeah. See you guys later. Bye. <laughs> New rule zero is that deals are unenforceable. Wild, wild west, baby. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's it. Uh, th thank you, everyone, for getting it. Uh, there's, I'm, I'm going to do no no episode end preamble. You guys you guys know everything. Go check out Rogue's Passage Podcast. They're great. Check out the AI Armor Sleeves, Abyss Proxy Shop for all the other stuff. That's, that's it. You guys don't need it. I'll, I'll give you the nice relaxing music on the way out, though. Thank you guys for so much for listening. Bye-bye. Uh, all right, later. <clears throat> nah, just give him the music for a minute. Talk over it. I don't even care. Can I finally eat my burger? You could have eaten it the whole time. Oh, I would have. Really so cold? Well, just cold, yeah, but like we got right into it and I didn't want to. We did jump right into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those are comically large onion rings. That's like a regular sized onion ring. It just looks big. Best outro talk? The only th <laughs> Listen, M's, all I know is big rings. <laughs> what does that even mean, Brando? Don't go there, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening so much, and have a great rest of your night. All right, later. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.